Yeah. Fico matters on the floor. Give it to me. Fuck Rojas. He can go to hell. Fuck Rojas. He can go to hell. I hate Rojas. He can go to hell! Fuck Rojas! I hate his stupid face And I hate his dumbass words I hope he dies I hope that Rojas dies! Fuck Rojas! How's everybody doing tonight? I'm sorry that I'm coming to you, uh... I'm coming to you, uh... Okay. Sorry, I'm I'm sorry, everybody, but... I'm uh, coming to you with a, a little bit of a busted microphone. So I apologize for my microphone tonight. I'm gonna do my best. You guys, this one doesn't sound that great. But I'll do my best with it because my uh, my book, as you can see, my my other mic is laying down over here because the the support uh, that drills into the desk that supports it broke off right before I was going live about an hour ago. In fact, that's why I'm pretty late right now because um, I was trying to fix it this whole time. Like, all right, I'm gonna fix it and uh, I'll just wait. And I couldn't I couldn't get it going, so I've got to. I've got a new one coming, and we'll see what happens. So, this microphone's okay. It's still a good mic. I mean, this is like a $200 headset, so it's still pretty good. You guys know it's pretty good, but that mic is much better, but so sorry. But that's the reason why I'm not using it tonight. But it, we're, just, we're just having a little bit of a hang tonight, so it's not a big deal. The Rock talk about the rock going forward in the future what it means triple h the rock what's going to happen this friday night on smackdown plus some other wrestling news nxt was tonight and really i'm open to talking about just about anything tonight the discord is open uh the dono link is pinned to the top you know the deal there super chats are open we're about five members away from uh five members away from 100 members so if anybody wants to become a member tonight's the night to do it because we might hit the milestone of 100 members and one of the big reasons we're going to hit that milestone is because of chief wahoo because we were only at about 50 50 members or so and then chief wahoo gifted like 40 something member or 40 members at least so shout out to chief wahoo because without him man that would I don't think that would have happened at all. I mean, it wouldn't have happened, so that's just a fact. So thank you to Chief Wahoo for, you know, gifting those subs. 
How about the weatherman, dude? The, the weatherman in New England messed up. There was no snow today. We're, we're supposed to get dumped on. I mean, they, they, like, everything was canceled. Like, school was canceled. Um, work was canceled. Like, this has to be one of the biggest botched weather reports that I've ever heard, bro. Like, they screwed this up really bad. Like, this was really badly screwed up. There was no reason why we couldn't have been working or at school today whatsoever but that's fine with me because i mean i i I was still dealing with my sciatica pain so i I, but i started feeling better today around i would say 2 p.m or so so around 2 p.m i was like damn i didn't have to shovel really and i'm starting to become pain free so that was pretty freaking cool bro um and so i was you know i was pretty happy with that I want to talk I want to start by talking about Back to the Future real quick. I want to talk about the fact that in Back to the Future because this is what I think about. I've been thinking a lot about Back to the Future recently. And I've been thinking about and thinking about Back to the Future because it blows my mind when I watch it. I just watched the trilogy again the other night. And I would say that I watch Back to the Future usually at some point once a year. You know, maybe once every half, well, year and a half now or two years now. But there was a time when every year, for sure, I would see it. Sometimes twice a year. But I definitely watch Back to the Future on an average of at least once a year, if not more. And the the thing that I notice really a lot now that stands out, and to be honest, this actually started standing out even in, believe it or not, the 90s about Back to the Future. And listen, I love Back to the Future. I love the movie, and I've talked to you about this before, where I think they should do a Ninja Turtles crossover. You guys know how I feel about this. But and I'm not I'm not I'm not kidding about the Ninja Turtles crossover. Like I'm dead serious. But uh, before we get to NXT, before we get to The Rock, before we get to uh wrestling news and other news. What's up Crystal? How you doing? Um Fort Lauderdale, Florida. What's up, Brad? Damn, dude. We used to go uh my my friend Bobby uh lived in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and we used to have a blast there. I stayed in Fort Lauderdale for two weeks in Coral Springs, and, dude, I had a blast. Oh, my God, bro. Donnie Cotta's bowling alley. Let me tell you something. What up, Grizzly Bear? Um, But, anyway, so in Back to the Future, when when Marty goes up to the the bar there or whatever in that, in that, the soda, whatever, the little old 50s diner or whatever, the cafe, it was the cafe 80s, but now it was like some 50s diner. He goes up there and he goes, "Oh, give me a give me a tab." And the guy's like, "You have to order something if you want me to make a tab." So that's the first joke, right? But that joke doesn't really land, and it really honestly, it might have landed in the 90s to some people, but it it, it really was not at much of a joke anymore because I don't even know if tab exists anymore. Tab was a drink that was like a fat-free, sugar-free type of drink, whatever back in the in the day and i think tab i I never i don't think i ever saw another tab after 2004 but like maybe it still exists but even when i would ask people like you ever drink tab they're like oh no i don't know what you're talking about so like when he's like give me a tab what what happens is in the movie he says to the guy from the 50s and he's from the 80s and the guy in the 50s he says hey give me a tab and the guy goes well you can't get a tab unless you're going to order something well, I think the same thing when I'm watching the movie. I'm like, why? I'm like, well, he's asking for a tab because he doesn't have the money to pay for it now. He's probably going to run away or something like that. That's what I thought. But then he says, well, f- fine, just give me a Pepsi free. And I'm like, what? Nobody knows what a Pepsi free is anymore because they don't make Pepsi free anymore, and which is sugar free. But, like, a normal person... I mean, I would think he would know that, but so those both of those jokes, it's funny because the guy from the 50s doesn't get the joke, and most people who are like under 40 years old nowadays don't get the joke either because like honestly, 
nobody said Pepsi free in 1995 and nobody said tab I don't think really ever in 1995 so like these both these two things like went out of style and were only a 80s thing there now there's multiple references to this in the movie and that's why back to the future is a movie that doesn't hold up and yet does hold up at the same time the movie overall back to the future holds up really well but there are many things in the movie relating to the time travel situation that don't add up at all that that are completely that fall flat because nobody gets the references because they're so embedded in the 80s like there's such 80s things that they don't really exist much in the 90s and they certainly don't exist anymore so it's it's funny that that's the case so the movie holds up but yet at the same time doesn't hold up in some ways so but overall it holds up and the one of the other things is Marty will say like oh my god this is heavy doc this is heavy nobody says this is heavy anymore you know although i've almost noticed it starting to come back i wonder but like it's something that nobody really said like at all like even in the 90s like by, by 1992 nobody said like it's heavy or that's some heavy shit or that's heavy nobody said that it like was something that was said from like 1983 to like 1988 and nobody said it again but it's in the first movie like predominantly i'm trying to I, i'm sure you guys out there can think of things like this from our past recently you know what i mean where like it would be like if there was a joke this a huge movie happened and there was a joke in the movie that was related to like what does the fox say that video from the that crazy trending viral video like after about 10 years it's like there's a lot of people that don't get that probably although that was pretty big but you know i can't think of good examples but there's a lot of good examples of like stuff that was like a thing you would say and trend for like a year or less and nobody ever said it again after that and if it's in a movie though that's huge it's going to live in that movie forever and people aren't going to understand it so when he's like oh this is heavy doc he the doc is like heavy what, what there's that word again heavy is there something going on in the future is there a problem with the earth's gravitational pull and and it's just a saying but doc doesn't get it because it's the 50s but guess what neither does most viewers watching the movie who are under 40 years old so if you're under 40 years old watching the movie especially if you're like 30 or 20 or younger you're gonna watch that movie and you're gonna be like i'm thinking the same thing as the doc marty's like that's heavy doc like and doc's like what what is there a problem with the earth like in the future what does that mean well you're watching at home and you're like what the, yeah what I, what does that mean i don't know what that means so like though there's like multiple instances in the movie there's more too where it's like all this lingo from the 80s it's not just lingo from the it's lingo from the 80s because it didn't even get out of the 80s it was in the 80s only and didn't make it out of the 80s so like most people stopped saying this by 1992 and for that reason in the movie it now is just out of place and it doesn't the jokes don't work cuz it's like I say thing from the 80s that we all know, but the guy in the 50s doesn't get it. But if you're watching the movie in the year 2020, you don't get it either. Anyway, I think I've made my point. I don't need to ramble on with this anymore. But that's my that's my point is that does Back to the Future hold up? That's what this all stems from. Does Back to the Future hold up? It really does hold up as an overall in the movie. I love it. We all love it. It's like my it's my favorite movie. If I had to take a movie onto an island, I would take Back to the Future. If I had to take a series on the island, it'd be Star Trek: Next Generation. But you know what I mean? Those would be my two things. Funny enough, it's like wholesome type of shows that like have a message and that I, I, I find very nice and interesting. Um, you would think I would take something crazy or whatever, but no, it's those two. Uh, but yeah, so so yeah, does it hold up? Kind of. Oh, man, Chief Wahoo, man, he did it again. Holy Christ. Guys. Chief Wahoo just donated five, gifted five subs. Holy shit, Chief Wahoo. It's Tuesday Night Rage. We haven't even begun to rage yet. This bitch is just starting. God damn, bro. Oh, my goodness.
Luke Rojas is gay? I don't know about that. I mean, I think he would have told me if he was. If if he does come out, he I'll tell you what. Luke better have a coming out party on this show. Uh, Chief Wahoo, thank you so much for the gifted memberships. Let's see who gets them. Come on them. out, you rapist! Come on out, you bunch of rapists. Jay West uh, got the first membership, so shout out to him. Congrats, Jay West, on uh, getting the first membership from Chief Wahoo. Hey, does this mean, like, we hit 100 members yet, or? Um, I don't know. It still says we, why does it say 93? I thought we had 93 when I started the stream. Come on out, you rapist. It still says 93 members. I don't know if it's missing something, or. Neil Stewart gets the number two spot on the memberships, courtesy of Chief Wahoo tonight. Thank you, Chief Wahoo. That's awesome. Chief Wahoo giving it up. I don't know why, but it says 93 memberships. I thought it said 94 earlier when I checked, and now you've gifted five, and it says 93. So I don't know if it just doesn't update or what's going on, but we should be... Come on out, you rapist! Really close to 100. Trenton Wade. Oh, my God. OG Trenton Wade getting the the other. <laughs> Come on out, you rapist. That's how you get introduced when you become a member here. Vince McMahon calls you a rapist. So, I mean, isn't that the, you know, the pot calling the kettle... Oh, well, you know. Um, Joe, were you a Surge guy, Mastodon? Yes. Goddamn right, man. I was obsessed with Surge. I was a big Mountain Dew guy, too, so Surge was like... Come on out, you rapist! It felt so good to be able to, like, drink something else, you know? Tab is good. Do they still have Tab? Um, Turtles and Ghostbusters. What up, Bryce? How you doing, man? How you doing? Um, Jennifer is hot. What we're talking about. I went to the Back to the Future run in Universal Studios. Good for you, Brad. I would. I Come on out, you rapist. Jobson, Jobson, thanks, man. You, well, welcome. Uh, thank you to Chief Wahoo for gifting you. Um, you know what would be great is if I if I lived to be ninety years old, that'd be so good. If I lived to be nine years old. And I went on the Back to the Future ride that they had. They they still have the ride, right? They still have the Back to the Future ride. And I go down to Orlando, and I go on the Back to the Future ride, and something goes wrong on the ride, and I die on the ride. Like, that would be a... Come like, on out, you rapist! A, a fitting end, a, a dream ending for me. Like, an absolute dream ending. Oh, my God. An Andre's Gaming uh, just became a member on his own. Thank you to Andre's Gaming uh, for doing that, man. Really appreciate it. We have another member. Come on out, you rapist. Good to have you here with us. Uh, but, yeah, so dying on the Back to the Future ride would be pretty fire. How long until WWE has a ride? And I got an idea for the WWE ride, by the way. Do you guys want to know my idea for the WWE ride? Let me put this over really quick. Let me put this to you because I think it's a damn good idea. If you guys want to donate to the stream tonight, the donation link Streamlabs is pinned to the top, or you can super chat down below. You know how to do it. And all the links are in the description box. Just expand it and all the donation amounts and things like that. We got new donations. Check them out. And the brand new $25 one and all kinds of other things. We go hump them. Uh, the Rock, 25 bucks, and a whole bunch of other ones. But uh, a long time ago, this is back when, back when Finn Balor was in NXT. The WWE added to uh, the Google uh, VR experience. So what you could do is you took your phone and you put your phone inside the Google headset and you could look and you could and then you could use the buttons on the side of the Google device. It was like 100 bucks. And you could click through and go to apps and go to different things. Well, the WWE had a little app on there. And if you clicked on the WWE app, they had certain things in virtual reality. And one of the coolest things I've ever seen in my life, they put virtual cameras on the posts, on the aisle. And so you could choose where you wanted to watch the show from, and it was all in VR. And you could look around in the ring and outside and all around. And, bro, it was one of the most immersive things and fun things. And it was about, I want to say seven or eight years ago and that that's far back the vr technology now is much better 
and this is something that I'm surprised hasn't been done because the WWE could literally offer an app on your phone where you get the WWE's VR experience to watch the pay-per-view, whether it be live or whether it be the next day. So don't remember, remember folks, if you guys want to experience this pay this paid event all over again tomorrow in virtual reality, you can log on to the WWE VR app and experience it from, from multiple areas in the arena. And it, it's so fun. Like, it's the one thing that I can't believe that they don't have. When they're running the ropes and you're, it's like you're there. It does, like, the, the best way I can describe it to you is it feels like you're in the building. Because the camera is set up from a vantage point of a fan. So you can look around, see all the fans, and see the ring, and it's like you're there. And there's a button you can hit to switch point of views from the ramp to the side of the ring to the top of the arena to the uh, inside the ring on the post, and you're like, what the fuck? It is, it, it's, it's somewhere Super in between being there. Party. It's very strange. I can't explain it. Luke stalks me. Andre's great gaming. He does. Well, he's a psycho. So that would explain it. Um, Andres, thank you so much for the $2. I, I don't know, though, man. I don't think he's willing to go to Canada at this point. Thank you so much, man. That, I believe, is your it says your first Super Chat. So uh, thank you so much, man, for that for that $2. Oh, Canada, our home and native land. True patriot love and all the sons command. With glowing hearts we see thee rise. The true no strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, you stand on guard for thee. O oh Canada. All right. Um, but so, so my point in all this is how can we do a WWE, the experience ride in Orlando, Florida, just like the Back to the Future ride? And I figured it out. You put a microphone in the ring, right? Microphone in the ring, and you use sound waves of the thing you record. You get everybody. Everybody gets to um, stand up on a mat. You stand inside of a wrestling ring, right? And they film they film a match inside of a wrestling ring where where you're the referee, so like it, it opens up you know like Star Trek the experience or Back to the Future the experience like you you get involved in a side story in the real universe like it, it Back to the Future the experience I think like Doc Brown is like hello you've got to travel with us to Mar, Mar like you we need your help to go there and it's like the stupidest thing. Um, and like the doc comes on, just like in Star Trek, you know, in, in in Star Trek, it's like Star Trek: The Experience. Um, Riker comes on, and Riker's like, "We need your help. Like, there's a vessel, and they took Captain Picard or whatever." Like, there's something very strange going on around here. At any rate, stay alert. If Tannen gets his hands on some of the equipment around here at the Institute, it could mean the end of our universe as we know it. So then you have to like. You go through this story, and then you're on the ride, and then the ride just goes through things and shakes, and you get all shook in, and you go through the story, and that's really it. Well, that's what we would do with wrestling. Basically, at the beginning, well, Vince is gone now, but you'd have, like, Triple H. Triple H would come on the screen and be like, hey, guys, listen, our, re our, our head referee is, is, our referee is sick tonight, so I'm going to need you to fill in as the referee. Like, just be good, be cool. Um, you know, you guys can do this and whatever else. And I think that would be hilarious. Like, and then so, like, you have to be, like, you're, like, the referee, you know. Um, and so, like, you, you watch the match from the vantage point of the referee in the ring. And every time the ring shakes as they're running or someone gets slammed down, you're standing on this thing where you, you kind of, like, and you're shaking everywhere and everything. And then it's like you're the referee. I don't know. So that would be the WWE experience, you know. So we can do it. So there's no reason why we can't do WWE, the experience in Orlando, Florida. Get off your asses, WWE and Disney. You can do it. If you can abduct kids, you can do this, okay? So just, like, let's get on this and do the right thing. Andre's Gaming, thank you so much. Really appreciate that dono, man. And uh, Chief Wahoo, thank you for gifting some subs. Let's uh, shout out some members now uh, while we got a few minutes here as we start this show off. 
Um, I see Garguts is on Discord. Um, Randy Viper donated before we went live, and I don't think it played. So let me just hit Randy Viper's dono. I think I don't think I read this. Um, Luke Rojas will retain. I'll donate forty six cents to him. Wow. Well, that may solidify Luke Rojas not retaining. So I hope that that's true, that you'll only send him 46 cents because that would definitely help out. Um, Allied Darkness is a member. Thank you, Allied. Chief Wahoo, big thanks. Louis Erdinetta. Um, Eddie Chaos is here. Shout out to all the people who were gifted a sub. Um, Jay West, Dobson, Lizard Man, Trenton Wade, Chief Wahoo, Spectral Citizen, Joe Bishop. Can you post the Discord? Yeah, Zero. I'll get you the Discord in a second here. Um, let's see. Who else we got? Mr. Pico Boulevard is in the chat. Uh, let's see. Crystal Pepsi was good, yeah. I agree. Come on out, you rapist! The villain! The villain has re-upped his membership. So the villain's back, and that is uh, 50... Oh, my God! Guys, that is 50 months. 50 months in a row for villain. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, I don't think the memberships are updating until like tomorrow or something. That's why. I think we might be at 100 right now. I think we might be at 100 memberships, which I think is tied for the record maybe. The record is somewhere around 100 something. So, we can get 200. Uh, thank you so much, bro. Um, who else we got? Andre's Gaming became one tonight. Jay West got one, uh, is one. We got Mr. Pico. D. Welsh is here. Brent Porter is here. Brent Porter says, I finally got to watch the Iron Claw today. I thought it was good. Have you seen it? No, I haven't got a minute to sit down yet to watch Iron Claw. I heard it was good, but, you know, like, I'm a little bit worried about watching it because I know how tragic it's going to be. So I just, I'm not, like, I'm not really keen on watching a tragedy. You know, it's going to be multiple tragedies, too. And thank God, apparently, you know, they left one of the tragedies out of the goddamn thing, but... I just know how tragic it's going to be, and that's that's going to suck. So, yeah, Brent, I should watch it, but I don't know, bro. And, yes, I do want to promote it. Monetize this, episode 450. is going to be one of the biggest episodes of the 400s for sure. The belt is on the line. The belt is on the line big time when Luke Rojas goes up against me and um, goes up against Dork Knight and Jay Menace. So I, I, I do have to announce something important, though, because it's not going to be like a normal monetize this championship night because you can only vote for Rojas, me, um, me, Rojas, Jay Menace, and the Dork Knight. So there's just a fatal four-way for the belt. But the important thing that's coming up is my announcement is that next week, um, I believe it's next week, Does someone tell me when Elimination Chamber is. It won't be the Elimination Chamber week. So just make sure we don't have we don't have that wrong. Although we might do it Elimination. Actually, you know what? I think we're going to, we might just do it anyway. I don't know. We got to talk about it. But, the next monetize this we are doing points in the bank so if there is one person that you really want to be champion and they're not the dork knight jay menace luke rojas or me the only chance you're going to have to help them on monetize this 450 
would be to get them the points in the bank. So just putting it out there that the next monetize this, next monetize this we have, which should be, I think, this Saturday, uh, points in the bank is going to happen. So points in the bank this Saturday on monetize this, and that will be your only chance to get somebody the points in the bank. And they can cash them in. They could cash them in on 450. As long as the champ is on the show, you can cash them in. So technically, you could cash them in next week. You could cash them in in eight weeks. Um, you know, you could cash them in on 450. Or you, you could even wait until 450 is over and then cash it in. As long as the show's still going and they're on the air, boom, cash it in. So that's what it is. And uh, that's what I, I don't necessarily like that we didn't have it open for everybody, you know, to win the belt. But that's sort of what I don't know. Rojas just kind of went above and was like, this is what I want. I mean, he doesn't really make the rules. He says he does because he's the champion. But normally I make the rules. So but I don't know why I did that. So I didn't really agree with that. But I agree with it because I said, all right, we'll do we'll give it a try. We'll see what happens. And we will. We'll see what happens. It'll be between Luke Rojas, Dork Knight, Jay Menace, and myself. But points in the bank this week will be between everybody. So somebody will have a chance. Hell, I could I could win points in the bank. I could literally win points in the bank, and then I could lose on 450 and then cash in my points in the bank still. So it, it will be a fun thing this Saturday. Just wanted to put that out there as some kind of a I don't know, programming note or something. I don't know. Um, just so people know how that works. Um, let me see. I'm requesting that they, that they off to watch Elimination Chamber. Um, yeah, so I don't know when Elimination Chamber is, but let me know when it is. Manny Gonzalez, where's Rose Tafa's beautiful self? I don't know, but I do know Gargutz is in the chat, so I'll be hitting up Discord in a minute. Um, the ghost from the coast says I won't be putting anything up if Nerdy isn't there. Uh, isn't the champ? I don't know. Well, you can make uh Nerdy could win points in the bank if you try to make him win points in the bank. Imagine Nerdy with points in the bank. Imagine Nerdy running around with points in the bank, and then Nerdy cashing in on monetize this night to make it a fatal five way. Or him just waiting to cash in on the whoever wins. I could see Nerdy doing that. That's so nerdy. There's there, that would be his podcast. If he had if Nerdy had a podcast, that's what it'd be called. It'd be called That's So Nerdy. Like that would be his podcast. And then he wouldn't get laid again. You know? Um w- was it Tommy on the call? Yeah, Tommy was on the call the other day, Jeffrey Jeffrey. Did you enjoy Tommy on the call? He was great. As always. We go hump them. How about the rock? You want to get into The Rock? We'll do it. Super chat party. D. Welsh wants me, Joe. D. Welsh wants you? So first, uh, Rostafa wanted you. Or no, first it was Luke Rojas that you said was, you know, hunting you down or whatever on Draves Gaming. But now you're saying that D. Welsh wants you. So you think Welsh wants you. You think that, you know, Luke Rojas is stalking you. Like, apparently everyone on this show is just trying to hunt you down for some Super reason. Like, you're that party. delicious or something. Dwellish wants to lace my boots. Mm. Oh, that's, uh, he probably wants to pull your pants down. That's probably what he really wants to do. Elimination Chamber is the 24th. Okay, yeah, so we'll be good. We'll be good. Points in the bank this Saturday. For monetize this, and then we'll have a a monetize this elimination chamber probably. So I'd back I'd back Jay Menace, but I can see his scalp. Yeah, he's got uh, Jay Menace is uh, he's uh, you know 
I mean, that's better than maybe I should do that to my hair. Cuz that's what my hair would look like if I you know, dreaded it up. You know, it would be like bald in the middle area, but then I could have these drooping dreads on the side. I could do that to me. You know? And that looks better than like flat hair coming down on the sides with the bald spot in the middle. I look like Friar Tuck or like a creepy boss or something. But it looks way better if you put your hair in those dreads, I guess. I mean, those are pathetic. I mean, Jay Menace, bro, those dreads look sick. Like sickly, not like good sick. Like those look like sickly dreads, bro. Like they look like they're, they're going to fall off your head. Like God's saying, just get rid of this. You know? And I get it because I've dealt with it too. You know, I've dealt with the same thing. Where it's like, you know, something's up. So I totally get it. I mean, if I if I turn on Luke, what? You're going to turn him on? You're going to turn Luke on? That's creepy. It's real creepy. Um, I'm going to go talk to Garguts because Garguts is here. With his name that just says G dot 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 dot. I don't know what the fuck happened. I think you, you have like, to rename yourself like, or something. I'll do it yeah, for I you. Yeah, that. Car guts. Yo. I fixed it for you. Oh. There you go. Change nickname. Mm, Gar Crust. Gar Crust. Yeah, that's even better. Gar Cunt. Gar Cunt. You like that? Uh, that's a good one. Hey, uh, I was going to say, going back to your uh, back to the future jokes and everything. The Simpsons, that's another one. I don't really get all the the pop jokes that they were making in the early 90s. Now, and I'm just, it's the same thing with that. So I was watching old Simpsons. I was like, Ronna Dixon? Oh, that fucking bitch? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, got, yeah, like the early first, I would say like the like maybe the first three seasons of The Simpsons do that a lot. Where you're like, what? Like, what are they, what are they talking about? Yeah. And you, you go back to it, you're like, you have to look this bitch up, or it's well, like, like some politician. And a lot of times, like, we get it, but, like, other people don't get it. Yeah. Especially uh, if you're younger, like, a younger crowd is not going to get it. And Dean, rea- Dean really is here, says Dork Knight is the next monetize this champion. Oh, God. Do you believe that? I don't know. So we're doing points in the bank for uh, Saturday. Points in the bank this Saturday. So somebody, that will be the only chance that somebody else could have to maybe get involved in that fatal four-way between J Menace, me, Dork Knight, uh, and uh, Luke Rojas. So. Well, it sounds like I'm that fifth person. You think so? Next you can take it? Right here. You can take that belt? Champ- I mean, I am one-time champion. One time, one time, one. I need a two-time. Okay. And then I can light it on fire and give it back to you in seven months. Oh, man. Hey, why do you think that Scott D'Amour got fired from TNA? Now, this came out a long time ago, like five days ago, and yeah. nobody was covering it. And I was, I, I, I was like, eh. And I just thought to myself, that is very strange. Nobody covered it that the TNA, the guy who runs TNA was gone. Mm-hmm. Like, but I thought it was weird because I was like, why would they get rid of him? He's doing an all right job and he's been there for, since 03 and he's doing well right now. It seems like an odd time to fire this guy. But like, other than that, I didn't talk about it because I figured fuck TNA, I you know, fuck them. And nobody else really talked about it. But suddenly, the last couple of days, everybody's talking about it now. But, I mean, out, yeah. there really isn't anything that I've noticed to it, like, that I, I've heard yet. So it's just weird that yeah, they've gotten maybe, rid of this guy. Maybe it was, like, allegations. Holy shit, am I echoing back? What? I was echoing back on your side. Oh, I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You think there's allegations going to come out about him or something? <laughs> right? That'd be fucking crazy. Uh, no, I can't. I can still hear myself echoing. I don't hear that at all. I don't know what's on your end. Pussy. You 
Pussy wussy. Pussy wussy. Where is everybody tonight? Quiet. It's, night, I guess. it's quiet here. I mean, like, there's no one in Discord. Who's everybody? Get in Discord. But, um, yeah, so I just, I don't know. I don't know if he did something that something's going to come out or they're going up. Or if they just, I mean, they've got to have some plan why, they, why they're doing this. But it just seems weird. They just changed the name back to TNA. And they're doing, doing all this. Great. Yeah, like they're doing, they had some buzz going. And then they yeah. get rid of this guy. Like that's a little strange to me that they get rid of him. Right as they generate a buzz, maybe maybe he th- maybe he oversold it and said, "Oh, trust me, we we turned the name back to TNA, and you're gonna see this big difference." And then it's been like five, six weeks or whatever it's been, and mm-hmm. nothing really happened. Maybe, and they were like, "Oh yeah, okay, nice, just nothing happened, bro. You're retarded. Goodbye." So I I don't know. And that, nobody's reported on anything really, like you said. And when it came out, it was I think. It was like five. It was like last Wednesday, and all I saw was an article that got rid of him and did future endeavors, whatever. So other like, people, well, who the fuck is going to take over now? Oh, they they already have somebody taking over. They had already announced it. I can't remember his name, but I can't find a picture of this guy at all. Oh yeah, we'll have to look for him then. Uh, people in the chat have already told me things that I don't know because I haven't looked it up at all. I haven't even I haven't looked into it. I haven't looked it up. I haven't been told anything. I haven't asked anything. So I know nothing. I bet people in the chat know more than me, which is why I'm bringing this up. And uh, Junior says he did not want to cut the TNA roster and have 71 talent. So maybe Scott D'Amour was so, like, in one of those situations where, like, he wasn't going to fire people. Like, I'm not going to be the one to fire some guy with a family and, and that sort of thing. And maybe... Got kids. Yeah, that's so, and maybe he was prepared to be let go. Like, hey, listen, fire me then because I'm not doing this. And so maybe that's what happened. Right. So I'm uh, maybe based on what I'm seeing in the chat, that could be what's going on. It could be that it's right. um that they're basically like, okay, he, that he was like, well, I'm not going to fire people. I am not firing people, and fire me if you have to. And so they did. They got they got someone else to run it. They're gonna bring. They're gonna fire probably twenty talents. They're going to rework, you know, contracts and shit like that and go into this really isolated, small, uh, whatever mode. I don't know what their spending amounts are. Maybe they had 20. I could just. They might have had 20 million bucks. Yeah, that's what. Oh, he had a cap probably that he was in the uh, for like what quarterly cap. I'm assuming that it's something like that. I'm assuming that there's 20 million dollars to spend a year. And and that's me assuming, right? But if you take twelve and you divide it, so you know, that's twenty million divided by twelve months, you know, hundred and sixty six thousand dollars a month. Yeah, wrestlers are wrestling like what, like divided by what, seventy one? Three times a month. Yeah, their average. So their average, their their the average they're paying wrestlers is about twenty five hundred dollars a month. So, but some, so, but I mean, some wrestlers are getting paid five hundred bucks, a thousand bucks. Some wrestlers are getting paid, you know. You think s- Naomi was on the twenty five? She had to get. More. Oh yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure, like, cause like I'm thinking of like that. Remember that? Remember Famous B was on Crackle, with that wrestling company. Yeah. Like famous, um, famous B. Ground? No, not not Lucha, but something else. There was something on Crackle, famous B and some whatever. They recorded one season, but that one season was given like ten million dollars or something like that, or five. It was like five million or ten million. Like they were given that much to work with, so they had thirty wrestlers. You know, and I think it was and, about. I think it was. I think it was so a million. I, well, I think it was a million now that I think of it. So it was a million dollars, right? So they got a million dollars, and you divide that by 30 wrestlers plus the production costs and the other costs. So, you know, by the time you get down to it, you know, say say Famous B made like $12,000. So they record, the, they record these episodes over like a month. So over 30 days, they record these episodes. They have 10 episodes, um, and they record three a week or whatever they did. And, you know, 
everybody makes about twelve to fifteen thousand bucks. You know, so that yeah. that that makes sense. Twelve to fifteen thousand to record and shit. They were making more than I was. I mean, they're making good money, but it's only a one shot deal. You know, you do you record it and that's it. And you hope it gets another season and another season. Because if it does well enough and the the network is like, yeah, these people always watch, like, th- like 30% of our fan base are watching your show, like, they probably renew it for, like, three years. So, you know, you're going to get, you know, and then the money's probably going to go up a little bit. So, you'll, you'll get a little bit. You get, like, fifteen, eighteen thousand dollars $18,000 for a month every year. I mean, that's a hell of a chunk, you know, so that's not bad. But it's not enough to sustain, a year, a, you know, a yearly paycheck. So, but in TNA, it's like that. Mo- most of the wrestlers in TNA are getting one to three thousand dollars a month for appearing, you know, three to four times. There's, guy, I wonder what the highest in fucking TNA is. Probably, um, well, let's think of the people they got. Like Naomi, Naomi, yeah. what was Naomi's contract? Does anybody? How long was she in TNA for? Like a year or six yeah. months or five months, it was, it was like a short term. Very short, yeah. Yeah, so they probably paid Naomi per appearance, like I like some kind of a contract per appearance thing. Like every time we use you, Naomi, we'll pay you this amount of money, and you know you can't, you know you have to appear for us, and the minimum is. It was probably something like that, like hey, don't go anywhere else but with us, for eight months or six months or whatever it was. Uh, let me find out when she showed up. Naomi debut TNA. So Naomi debuted um, May 4th, 2023. Okay, so she was only there about uh, seven months. So Damn. So, yeah, like, they probably, g- you know. A fucking cup of coffee. Yeah. They so they, they, there. they probably gave her, like, I don't know. Like, they have $20 million to work with. You think it's only 20 minutes? Because, I mean, somebody... Yeah. I, we can have, like, somebody on the roll payroll that's higher than that. Or not 20 million. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody that they could be paying them, like, $650,000 or something. You have somebody high like that. I bet she made, like, $50,000, 50000 to $70,000, and she's allowed to appear at cons, at other some other independent shows. Um, but she will exclusively only work, you know, with TNA, um, on TV, that sort of thing. And then they gave her that. So she could take her time away from WWE where at WWE, I don't remember what she's making. Probably That's like 45,000. What? It's 45,000 per, per wrestler. That's what it says. Uh, yeah. A year, what a year. Made, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Per year. So wow. there, there's 70 wrestlers that comes out to three three point one million dollars. But I don't buy Damn. that because I think some people are paid more and some people are paid yeah, a little, paid less. So I don't think that's 100 percent. But 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 anyway, the bottom line is when I said 20 million, they have 20 million for everything. So that's for all the production staff, the presidents, the referees, the cameraman, every all that sort of thing. 20 million bucks. So if the wrestlers take up, you know, two million of that. What are your other production costs? You know, and that's usually those are high, all those things are higher usually. So, but I'm just I do think that they do give out higher a little bit higher pay to some of the other people. I'm sure Naomi got like a like a little more than that. Yeah, she but, probably had to get like you know double that at least. But you know, Maybe like- either way, the guy's gone, and I guess when you're in Scott D. Moore's position, you're. I always thought he was just sort of like the backstage guy and the guy who was on camera, but I didn't know that he was the one, like, he was the Dixie Carter at this point. I didn't realize that they'd given him the checkbook or, you know, that they'd given him the ability to, you know, write the deals with people. Like, here's all the money, you figure out how to use it. Well, we don't like the way you're using it, you're fired. You know, he's he's essentially the GM, like, of a baseball team or something or a football team. Like, hey, you know, yeah. Scott Bohr. Well, no, that's a that's an agent. But, uh, you know, whoever. Um, Theo Epstein. Hey, Theo Epstein, you know, here's the money. Do whatever. 
and then they don't like that he's spending too much money, they get rid of him. You know, we're like the Patriots. The Patriots spend like the least amount in the entire NFL. Like they're one of, they had all those great years and over the past 10 years, the New England Patriots are one of the bottom and I think the bottom spenders in the entire league. So there's something to that from somebody where they don't want to spend all this money. So, you know, I, I think that sometimes that's the GM doesn't want you to spend that money, but I think there's times where they do want you to spend that money. And I think one of the reasons why Belichick is gone from the Patriots is because they had more money that they could have spent. And they didn't know Joe, there's one place that he can go to that money doesn't matter. And next week, Tony Khan's got a major announcement. (laughs) Oh, Scott no. Demore is going to come in. <laughs> Scott Demore is coming to oh, AEW. He's going to be all elite. He's going to run Ring of Honor and re- run that shit into the ground. No, he's going to bring it up, actually. It Wait, is, did he up. say there's another big, important announcement next week? No, but when doesn't he? You're right. And that's pro- that probably is. That, it, that will be probably an announcement. Because he doesn't have anybody running Ring of Honor. And quite honestly, yeah. he, he needs to step away and not think about Ring of Honor. Honestly. Uh, Tony Khan. So. That wouldn't be the worst. That. That, that's not a bad idea. Tony Khan says, "Hey, Scott, you're you're basically doing the same thing." I would just put I'd put him in charge of like getting a booking team together and here, guys, book Ring of Honor. And unless I have something where I need a crossover or some kind of story to tell where we need to cross over into Ring of Honor, which will happen once in a while, uh, everything mm-hmm. else is on you guys, you know, to do whatever. Yeah, he'll bring that shit back up. But if he Tony could just, Khan if just Tony Khan could just relinquish that power, though, he's always so like super chat party. Big fan Joe just Luke wants me, so does D Welsh. Man, well, listen, um, I love you, Andres, so I appreciate that. And you know what? I might help them get you if you want them, and you want to be a want to have a piece of them. I might help you get that. Oh, that's right. I forgot Elimination Chamber is going to be at like 5 a.m. in the morning, so that's going to be kind of a a weird thing anyway. That's right. So, yeah, we'll still do Monetize This all the same way. But next week on Monetize This, it's points in the bank. The points in the bank will give someone the chance on Monetize This 450 uh, to potentially win the Monetize This title. That's right. I forgot all about that. So not this Saturday, but next Saturday. Yeah. Well... Points in the bank will be this Saturday, but uh, I think Elimination Chamber is the Saturday after. Oh, yeah. What's up, Ramon? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How are you guys, man? I was just hanging out, yeah. you know, taking a pretty chill. I'm about to go grab some coffee in a minute to wake myself up a little bit. I had a little bit of a crazy a day. Of How you feeling? Oh, man. Feeling great, bro. Just uh, so far, I mean... This has been a while since I've actually watched Raw, like, almost a month straight, dude. I'm kind of liking what's happening over there. Watching oh, SmackDown, I mean, it's, it's not the greatest. Like, yeah. I, I definitely agree with you with most of your guys' opinions. But, I mean, I mean, it's been a while since I watched every episode, like, the full three hours, man. So, I'm liking where it's going. And if I think it's where it's going, I think that's going to be awesome. Yeah, I think that they've done a good job of, gen- you know, getting me to watch. Because, I mean, it wasn't, what, like, last month and the month before – I wasn't doing raw reviews, so I stopped doing them because I just couldn't even watch well, SmackDown. I mean, it's, it's not. I couldn't even bring myself to watch them and watch it, which is crazy. I mean, I haven't, I haven't really missed a raw review from 2013 to 2020, early, early 20, early 2023. So we're talking about ten straight years. I might have missed like eight raw reviews total. And towards after the summertime, I missed a ton of raw reviews because I didn't want to do them. Like for like I I got no like my there was only like a hundred and eighty people watching me. Number one, number two, there was like no donations. Number three, I got to get up early in the morning to do regular work because YouTube wasn't doing as well for me anymore. So all those reasons were like, and then I'm watching Raw, and it was just killing me. And it's like three hours of this, 
and I lost I, I lost interest in doing it and like doing this. I wasn't even angry. I mean, that was a lot of the times that was the whole thing was I'd be angry and flipping out about what I what I could do better and what we should they should do better and what could be done. And it wasn't there was no passion. I didn't have any passion to say this. What are they doing? Do this. That. It was just like, yep, another piece of shit. And I'm tired. And oh, well, yeah. Yeah, that's how what I was explaining to Gargus and Jesse last week. Uh, that like the only reason I even kept up with Raw is because of uh, Cronin's reviews, man. Like he does, he suffers for me, you know. Like you guys suffer for me, so like <laughs> I don't have to watch the shit, <laughs> you know. That's and funny. it just yeah. And lately, now I've been liking it because if like like I explained to Jesse and Garga, it's like if the Rock's gonna be like the new Vince McMahon and the Bloodline's gonna be like the new corporation and. Cody's going to be like the new Stone Cold for this generation. I'm all for it, dude. I really am. Yeah, if that's what it uh, really uh, to. Dude, uh, you know what nobody's really talking about right now is like when this WWE expires in October, September, September will be the last one. What are they going to do for those next three months? Like the Raw's going to start in January in Netflix. So there's not going to have any Raw. They're just going to do SmackDown, NXT, because those are the ones that have a a TV deal right now. I'm kind of confused. Is Raw going away for like three months? Or are they going to do it like, I don't know, like on the know, WWE. Yeah, dot com, WWE, you know, YouTube.com or whatever stupid shit, YouTube WWE channel. Get my coffee. I'll be right back. I got, I got a coffee. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I got a, I got a coffee. Yeah. I don't know. That is interesting, man, because I was thinking the same thing like yesterday. Like, because if that's like when their contract's up, is it like, yeah, like, is there going to be no Raw? Are they still going to be live somewhere until like they're officially live on Netflix? Like, right. yeah, that, yeah. Or like, they might just I mean, do it on their, on their, on the YouTube channel and that's it. Oh yeah, I, mean, I think they still don't they air replays on like Hulu at, at the moment right now? Like the day after? Replays? On yeah, Hulu? like I thought I thought Hulu gets them oh, like right away. Yeah, order. yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot about that. I don't have Hulu anymore. <laughs> no, yeah, oh, no, no, no. I'm a I'm a big ass mark. I'm gonna try to watch as much wrestling as I can. <laughs> so I try to make sure to have all the subscriptions. But yeah, 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 I, I think they were the same on Hulu the next day. Yeah, they they usually were on Hulu. I remember watching Made Event over there when uh, yeah, Damien Sandow was doing some great things. When he when he was still over there, when he was still wrestling. Yeah. I know, man. Oof. But like I said, man, hopefully everything goes good because it's like. I don't know. It's just because when I, I was looking at like WWE memes, like when people were talking about like the, the promos they had when back when they had yeah. like, you know, just regular promos that had nothing to do with anything. They were just kind of doing commercials for the show. And like, remember when they had Creed, like fucking in the promos and shit, the Creed songs. And I'm like, well, this is where The Rock oh, comes yeah. from. You know, this is the era he comes from. I don't think he would pass up this uh, chance to like, really push Cody because if he pushes Cody now while the iron's hot, it's just going to push Roman. You know what I mean? Yeah. <clears throat> I think, yeah, I see what you're saying, but luckily they're going to go with this Cody thing and let's just yeah. see what happens. I'm like, just, I, I'm off, I'm off for whatever is going to, whatever they have on the table. I'm down. It's fucking, yeah. As long as it's entertaining. Out. Yeah. Cause that's when I see it going. Like, like they just gotta make him like a stone cold in a sense, like yeah. Where like I see him winning at WrestleMania, and then like, you know, it being a struggle for him to keep the title because it could be like with Vince, like every week they're making it hard for him to keep the title. I think Joe is talking. Oh, go for it, Joe. No, I guess not. He's he's eating. Or just drinking uh, something. Uh, uh, he left his phone on or something. Uh, no, I'm, I'm up to see what, what they do. Like, uh, what if Seth yeah. turns? And, you know, people have been talking about that, too. What if he 
you know, because the whole shield did with Roman. Maybe he yeah. turns on Cody. Maybe he doesn't he doesn't have his back. I don't know. Everybody's been speculating yeah. and, and 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 it's got everybody fantasy booking, and that's what I like about it. It's like fuck yeah, everybody's passionate about wrestling. We're not going into WrestleMania going like, oh well, this is gonna happen. They're gonna win. Charlotte Flair is gonna come back. She's gonna win. Oscar is gonna lose. Like, you know, it's it's kind of the same old thing. And there's gonna be a special, you know, celebrity somewhere in the audience, or you know, there's gonna be fucking uh, what do you call it? Uh, shitty ass fucking entrances with like nineteen scooters and three <laughs> dragons and fucking five fat girls. <laughs> diverse. I don't know. Susan G. Coleman's gonna fucking shit a ribbon out of her ass. Whatever. It's always the same thing, but this one's got us talking better. Just about fantasy booking. I like it. Exactly, man. But I mean, like I said, I just, I, I kind of have faith with Rock being majority shareholder, and I just don't think he's gonna attach himself to anything that's gonna fail. Who, The Rock? Yeah. Because, like, oh, how many times has he been asked to come back to the company? And he's, like, and he's turned it down a lot. So, like, with him, like, having a hearsay and, I don't know, he I just... Attach like, himself to something that doesn't fail. I'm sorry, my guy. But how many times has The Rock attached himself to a movie that fucking flopped? Well, come on. That was early in his career. And, like, come on, bro. Those are movies. That was more about money. And Adam, Black Adam... Again, that was more about money, bro. Like, I, I would have fucking played black. Because, come on, bro. Like, you know, it's The Rock. and I'll play black dick for that money. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like, you know, he got some mad money for Black Adam. Like, that, That's different. Yeah. Jumanji 2, really? Why did they I mean, get a fucking Oscar? Kevin Hart got an Oscar for that shit. Why? Well, dude, because it's attached to Hollywood. Like, even if it is a flop, is, are, are most of those movies really a flop? They make money. So yeah, I guess degree. so. It's like, like one of those seasonal movies. It's like, it's, I don't yeah. know. It's, it's one of those family yeah, seasons. Right, none of those films were his best work. I'll give you that. You're absolutely right. But, like, I mean, that's Hollywood money, bro. That, that guy got paid out either way. Oh, no. Yeah. Uh. Dark Knight saying, Black Adam was probably, I can already hear him now. Let me tell you something. Yeah. Black Adam was the most powerful movie in the world. <laughs> You're so yeah. hard on Dark Knight, it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but someone has to be. I feel like someone has to be. <laughs> yeah, he's like that friend that you have to slap around a few times when he's drunk. No, no, nah, but... About. No, but I mean, you're just you're just being the guy for him. You're being a friend in a sense, like you know, do him, like you know, it's yeah, cool. Yeah. Dark Knight has a heart, but I, you know, he just he doesn't know when to. I get it. He, he might get a little carried away with his rants, but it's cool though. Like you're you're there to check him. <laughs> right, little little show a little love right there in the stomach. Yeah, yeah. you know, <laughs> you're doing it out of love. I, I totally see. It, so, yeah. <clears throat> Knock his fucking teeth in. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't come to that. <laughs> You're in the rock. I see your said that. Mm -hmm. I see What's up? Yeah. So when it came to the rock doing that, uh, I was like, "Oh, are they gonna start doing like?" Is when they go on Netflix? Do you think they'll they'll go read fucking TV fourteen now? I mean, I'm pretty sure the rock's thought of it. Right. Like. Like, yeah, because if he's a majority shareholder, he has say. I mean, he's going to put his ideas over. I mean, look at what happened with Fast and the Furious, bro. Like, him and Vin Diesel were at each other's throats because they had conflicting ideas. Yep. You know, at least that's what the rumors were on the internet. <laughs> and I think he's doing three more of those or two more. Oh, okay. So he's, uh -huh. he's doing a Hobbs one, another Fast X. Are they up to 10 already? Yep. <laughs> so it said Fast X 2 last time I looked it up. I was like, oh, Fast yeah. X 2? 
fuck? Don't you mean Fast 11? Oh, no. Speaking about their people messing with Dork Knight in the chat now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he fucking he said it was his bad. I was like, Ghost, what are you doing? That's <laughs> yeah, I thought that they, they I thought that they would go TV fourteen if they do like Netflix. There's they're even like mentioning blood. They should mention fucking bra and panties match next or something. And that definitely would get the the pervs back if they did that again. <laughs> At night. With WWE and have uh, what's her name, uh, the the announcer girl, Ashley. Mm-hmm. Her name is. <laughs> yeah, again, do a brawn. Have have her announce everything like she does with the the Chelsea Green. Chelsea Green. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'd be hot as I, I, I totally see that, man. I don't know. I think they might go TV 14. Let's see where they go from WrestleMania. But I, I only see good things happening. Personally, I have more positive than negative thoughts. Yeah, I got more, more eyes. They have more eyes on them right now. And it's, they're talking about Vince shitting on them, anybody anymore. So Because for me, I mean, I'm always watching wrestling. Like, and if I don't watch it live, I'll, I'll try to catch up with it on my days off. And like, this is like the first time in like since I don't know how long, like my brother's been like, Oh, hey, let's watch Raw. Or let's watch SmackDown. Like like that yeah. guy stopped watching wrestling back in the attitude era, you know? Yeah, I I stopped watching wrestling like in two thousand and four. And like Yeah, so that was around the same time. I, a little, I started watching like more TNA a little bit more, yeah. and then I just stopped watching wrestling and got into playing music more. Oh, and then good. I came back years like you know 10 years later or something and i'm just like what the fuck is all this shit yeah like eight years later i come back and i'm just like dude, i don't even know who's who or what yeah but it's it's, it was, it's it was a, just mind-blowing yeah um, you were kind of like where my some... brother was at because like i because the only reason he ever watched wrestling like after like 2004 is like because of me because i'd be like come on let's watch it let's give it a shot you know or like Oh, TNA is good or New Japan, like the other stuff that kind of like kept me going versus watching like the, the regular WWE stuff. And that, that's what got like, that's the only reason my brother watched it because I kind of forced him to. But like now he's like being like, oh, let's watch Raw. Now he's excited to watch it. I'm like, oh, wow, this is this. Is how I know it's getting good because it's getting my brother's interest. Yeah, that's, that's kind of like me. Uh, my brother yeah. was the one that got me back into it. And- he was like, I'm going to watch the Royal Rumble. I was like, fuck it. I got beer. I haven't fucking seen a Rumble in a while. Yeah. And everybody's coming out. I was like, who the fuck is Cisneros? And it's like Cesaro. <laughs> oh, I remember Cesaro from uh, Chakra. Because, I mean, I was watching a lot of these guys in the indies. Like, I remember him from ROH and Chakra. And, like, and that's the only reason I, I would still, like, right. watch WWE or even or watch Cronin's reviews. Because, like... Kari? Um, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I I used to watch these guys back in Chakra, and I was like, oh shit, they made it to WWE. Oh, that kind of piqued my interest, you know. Yeah, but I think if I you I think if you're watching this past year, you wouldn't be as excited. But I do think it's better. So like that's the good thing. It's it's like gradually gotten a little bit better because like I said, I wasn't even yeah. reviewing it. It was so bad. But I am still frustrated mm-hmm. that they're not taking advantage. Like, I'm not saying I want the Attitude Era back. I'm just saying I think they need to do some more out-of-the-box type of stuff to keep, you know, to even out the pa- – Because right now it's just have matches, cut promos. Have matches, cut promos. I would like a little bit more, like, some backstage what if they blur stuff. the lines? Well, they do that. They 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 do. I would like more of that, but they do blur the lines. You know, they blur lines. They a little bit, but I I, a little yeah, a little bit more of that would be nice. But I'd also retcon. Well, what? They redcon. Redcon. Yeah. Redcon. Who said that? I forget. Somebody said that wrong. Rostapa. It was on the show. Rostapa said it wrong. He always says. Somebody said it. Mm. Was dying. Redcon. Yeah, he's a mess. He's a mess. Rostov is a mess. Uh, what do you What do you think about like WWE? Uh, their, it's the contract ends on October. What are they going to do for Raw between that and January? 
Um, I don't know. I just I just see them extending it. I don't think anything crazy is going to happen. I think it would be kind of cool if Monday Night Raw, if they like, imagine if they couldn't extend the deal, and if financially they could do this, it would be pretty cool. What if? I'm sure what's going to happen is they'll extend the contract and they'll be on USA Network and they'll just, you know, extend it up until the moment. But wouldn't it be kind of cool if uh, WWE uh, broadcasted Raw on YouTube and YouTube TV? Like, so you could only, you could if you're going to watch Raw, you could watch it on YouTube or you could watch it on YouTube TV. How many viewers would that get? Like, for, like, three months. Because, like, I'm thinking about, like, when they do, like, press conferences or they do pre-shows or they do things like that. I mean, usually there's only, a at the max, a couple hundred thousand people watching. Usually, like, usually it's, like, 80,000 people are watching. So, what what would they get for viewership if they were, like, hey, we're only going to be doing Raw on YouTube for, like, three months. And so then they could do a deal with... Yeah, they, like they're on YouTube TV. Like YouTube channel. Right. It would be interesting to see what kind of YouTube numbers they would do. Like Raw does 1.6 million usually. Are they going to get 1.6 million viewers on YouTube? Because I've never seen 1.6 million viewers on any live stream on YouTube. Has that ever happened? The most live viewers on on a YouTube stream I've ever seen is... I don't know, like 130,000 one time I saw. I, I don't know. What Has anybody out there, if you have an example of it, let me know. Have you ever seen a YouTube channel or a YouTube stream of some sort? What's the highest amount of viewers you've ever seen on it? I, it's u- like usually when it's a big, big name or company or somebody or whatever, it's like 30,000 to 70,000. And th- for YouTube, those are huge numbers, like massive numbers. So, I don't know. I mean, I mean, yeah. I mean, I'd have to agree with you there. I, I don't know of anything personally, but I don't know. I think that would be interesting if they started broadcasting live on YouTube because the clips do get mm-hmm. plenty of hits. Like when you see LA Knight's clips or when they do highlights of Raw, they they get a decent amount. So they went live on YouTube. I, that'd be interesting. What numbers they can pull live? Yeah, well, it'd have to be their numbers that they have already. Like what? Three million, like a whatever thirty-two million. Oh, this is a good take. Uh, this is a good. This is a good point because we've seen um, Pat McAfee's show. I think McAfee had over two hundred thousand at some point, maybe during the Rogers thing or whatever. Yeah, so I've seen Pat McAfee with probably yeah, a couple hundred thousand. So, yeah. but if I if I ever saw one million people watch, I'd be like, wow, this is like ninety-five. Point five million subscribers, so they have more than enough, boy, and, you know, to watch that shit. But I've never because seen. My it, point is like I've never seen it close to the number that allegedly watch Raw on USA Network. So, if there's 1.6 million people watching on USA Network, I'll, I don't think you'll ever see that many people watching on YouTube, which is like. You would think that almost everybody by now, you know, knows how to find them on YouTube and would know how to find Raw on YouTube, but I wouldn't, you wouldn't see it. Yeah, I, I think the most, I think you'd see about a half a million maybe. If they really promoted it and Raw was going to be live on YouTube, maybe you'd get 500,000 people watching. But like, mm-hmm. you're telling me that a million people are missing Raw then, but it's on YouTube and that's free. So that blows they my mind that it's free. They can they can raise their subscriptions too. Be like, we're gonna go live on YouTube. Subscribe to us. Yeah, you know, and then people start subscribing more, and then they have like you know like a cap at like I don't know like well, they, maybe a million people. Watching. And they wouldn't want to do it because advertising is is not as good, right? So advertising on YouTube, they would they would take a sixty percent advertising hit or something like that. Like they would lose probably sixty percent revenue because for whatever reason on TV the ad revenue is way higher so McAfee gets over a million during the first hour on ESPN during his stream are you sure about that you've seen a million people in the like 
watching now live, you've seen that, D. Welsh? I've never seen that, and I watch him, so let me know if you've seen that. Like, legit. McAfee gets over a million during the first hour on ESPN during his stream. I thought he was on ESPN, though. He's not on YouTube, right? Or is he on YouTube No, he does both. So they have a... he does it for an hour or two, and then he goes straight to his stream. So they end the stream on ESPN, and then it still is on. Okay. And he gets all those viewerships. Well, let me look at and his I think live he's stream. He gets a million. I think he's saying a million on ESPN. Yeah. Like so I don't. So that. So who cares, D. Welsh? Because that doesn't matter. Because you're telling me the numbers that Pat McAfee gets on ESPN. I'm talking about YouTube. Like, I don't care about ESPN and how many millions on there. That's my point, like, in this whole thing. That's literally my point, is that WWE gets millions of views on USA Network. But if WWE goes live on YouTube, they don't get anywhere near that. But yet YouTube is yep. free. So why don't they get, you know what I mean? So that tells you how many, how many people are still connected to cable. And if I look at Pat McAfee over the last 11 days on YouTube... He hasn't cracked a million live views, so I know he he doesn't have that many live viewers. He's got 500,000 to 300,000 views on his videos. So that tells me that he gets about 20,000 people watching him live. So Pat McAfee gets 20 to 30,000 live viewers at a, at a time. So probably over 200,000 people tune in to watch Pat. Over 200,000 people or 300,000 people tune in to watch Pat live, but at a time he only has 20,000 watching concurrently or whatever you want to call it. And then probably he has a couple hundred thousand that watch the replay and things like that. So, yeah, Pat McAfee, not even close. Not even close. Like 20, 30,000 live viewers. But I'm saying I want to look down and see watching now one million people. And I've never seen anything even close to that on YouTube. And I don't think we even have an example of it. Shit, do you think uh, fucking PewDiePie would go... Live I mean, I when I saw PewDiePie live back in the day, I think, I think there might have been a stream I saw of his one time that had maybe seventy thousand, and the, you know, because like yeah, I mean, so bro, he didn't even like get near his fucking how many people watch? Yeah, him? like like dude, like or, a thousand people, a thousand live viewers on YouTube is like a hundred thousand people on TV. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like if you watch, when you if you watch Joe Rogan live, you know he would have. 50,000 watching live. You know, you watch like like Tim Cast, I think the political guy, he does live streams. He has like 50,000, 30,000, 20,000 people watching him live. You watch um uh, I'm trying to think like I mean just anybody else they might have you know 3 to 5,000 live viewers watching and that's a lot. You know, and and now I have I have somewhere around 300, 500 sometimes, sometimes 180, whatever, somewhere in there. And I mean, that's pretty damn good for YouTube, but it's not. But it's more mm-hmm. like it translates to a lot more like so if WWE has one point six million watching on cable, you know, they're probably going to get one hundred thousand to two hundred thousand watching live on YouTube. So that's like, you know, two hundred thousand yeah, people on YouTube is like a million people on cable. AEW numbers. Right. I saw Pat have 70,000 live the first hour a couple weeks ago. Yeah, so there you go. I mean, like, so Pat McAfee does, you know, he he can sometimes hit that 70,000 mark. But, like, yeah, not even close to a million, though. Nowhere near it. I saw a million on YouTube. It was a live stream of Sean's View smoking his cock. Yeah, that would be that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's also just older people are attached to wrestling just – at the end of the day because like i go to these shows like there's even like when i went to that AEW show there wasn't really a lot too many young guys you know what i mean mm. it was like guys that were like my age and older like 38 40 and they're not willing to basically turn on youtube you're you're, you're thinking like they're like is it on usa network uh if it's on youtube i'm not gonna watch that yeah well i just think if, if they're older they're just used to like watching raw on usa or like AEW on television you know <laughs> i think that's what it really comes down to right i guess i'm i guess i'm now in the and i'm now fully committed to the app era i have no problem now turning on my tv and, and putting it on youtube like i have no issue i mean i have some minor complaints about the fact that you know youtube and stuff like that doesn't look that good and i i get in arguments with people all the time because they're like i have a great connection it looks great 
I'm like, yeah, that doesn't matter. It doesn't look great. Because if you order – Fucking cable guy it, over here? Dude, if you <laughs> order WrestleMania on cable, on a pay-per-view for $100, it looks a million times better. Because you're seeing the yep. entire frame rate. It looks so crisp and smooth. It's not even close to, like, watching it on Xbox. You put Xbox next to it, it looks all fucking framey compared to the yeah. to the $100 pay-per-view. And I'll tell you what, man, if I have money, I will pay for that $100 at WrestleMania because it looks so good. I would rather watch that. But nowadays, I don't do it for two reasons. Two, because now I can't got to save money. But also, too, um, I need to be doing this stuff while I'm watching, and I don't have the cable TV in this room. So I just go, all right, fuck it. But it doesn't look good. It doesn't It doesn't even look good. It looks bad. Like, I think WWE looks terrible on Peacock on my Xbox. And on a computer, it looks better. No, you're absolutely okay. right. Because, like, my brother, who's all about, like, frame rates and all this stuff, and, like, like even I see it because I have Peacock. Like I said, I have all the subscriptions that – tried i can afford to watch it like all in any wrestling and like i definitely agree with you it doesn't look as good as like if you were to buy it for the pay-per-view like on direct tv or something yeah and i haven't bought it in about three three years now but um i miss it i remember every year i would buy it and people would be like what are you doing and i'm like i there's a big difference um and but 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 dude you pixel people yeah, and it's, and, it's, and it's weird to me. Think about it. Like, there's so many people out there that don't care and don't even notice. So, like... And well, I, I notice. I just can't afford it. So okay, I have to that's it. different. If someone says, like, no, nah, I, I can't afford it and it doesn't bother me, that's different. I know. Yeah. Because, like, the show, like, for an exception, the maybe the last few months, but, like, before, like... I always knew it looked better, but I never cared. That's why I did the Peacock and WWE subscription to watch the pay-per-views because I don't care for the show anyway, so why do I care if it looks good? Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And it's not that great anyway, so why do I want to pay 100 bucks to watch it crisp when I don't even care really? But like, if you were like super into it and you had some money, you'd be like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm going 100 bucks, I'm dropping it, and I'm getting, yeah. you know, I'm doing the whole deal. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but like, I get it. And if it's like, it's like audio. Some people don't care. It's like I listen to this on Spotify. I listen to this on YouTube. I don't care. Some people they can they can tell. You know, they're, they're, it sounds like shit, and they're like, "I'm not doing that." So, but like to me, it's like it's irritating. It's like so it looks so bad. And it's just one of those things I deal with now. But I'm like, how do we regress? Like, how do we go from like, oh, I want an HD TV, so this looks so beautiful. But now, okay, I'll just watch a shit frame rate piece of shit on an Xbox stream, and it looks like shit instead of paying the hundred bucks for the beautiful looking thing. So it's just funny that like we went from like, oh, we've got to get the best looking thing, like let's go with an HD TV. Well, why do you even have an HD TV? Because they look like shit. But that's all they sell now. So it's just like we've regressed backwards in a weird way. Like we could have a way awesome picture, but we don't even cable and stuff there's like these some of these games you watch them and you know youtube tv and things like that and it looks like shit and you're like man this should look so much better than it does the hell is going on uh let me go to the donation okay, no, no. super chat party andre's gaming always nerdy is god wow love's always nerdy as well hey. thanks for supporting brother and uh i'll tell nerdy i'll tell nerdy that you love him man Appreciate it, bro. He loves you. Let me, brother. Yeah. Love loves you. Um, <laughs> we love you. He might not be. Uh, we'll see how he does. If he stays with the company too. Speaking of Brucey, I mean, very. Oh, uh, right. He's got to be Dunk looking over Chino? his shoulder. Don't mind if I do. What's my name? Dunkachino. It's a whole new game. Dunkachino. You want creamy goodness? I'm your friend. Say hello to my chocolate blend. Perhaps <laughs> WWE is waiting for a TV deals to be finalized to announce the gap move from USA to Netflix for Raw. Well, they're, they're, no, they're going to go to Netflix in January, but there's still a gap, right? I mean, maybe maybe you're right, Haystacks, Monet. They could be waiting, but there, there's got to be an announcement. There's got to be an announcement at some point about what WWE is going to do for that three-month gap. 
Um, yeah. But yeah, maybe they're just waiting to finalize. But they're pr- probably what it is is they're in talks. They're probably talking still to USA and other things. Now, if I was WWE, I would try to ink a three month deal with some other network. You know, like r- like, but like TNN or when they went yeah. to MTV. Yeah, like just it would be very interesting. But but at the same time. Somebody said they should go to whatever that AEW's on or whatever, and I was like, well, that'd be stupid because then what you're doing <laughs> is you're telling your whole audience to come over to this other channel where your competition is, and then everybody <laughs> comes over to that channel. Then they find out there's another wrestling show on that channel, then they start watching that show. So that would be a really, I think, stupid move uh, of WWE, so they would not do that. <laughs> not that they, Not that it would even be able to happen anyway, and TNT wouldn't do that, but no, you wouldn't do it because... It put eyes on your competition, which is a bad I, idea. I get it. It's it's for the election. The election is around that time, right? And they're gonna go to C-SPAN. Oh and my gonna, God! The WWE on C-SPAN. And they're gonna get yeah, all the people that, to start watching <laughs> C-SPAN. And the Rock will jump yes. in the ring and tell you who to vote for. Yeah, vote well, for me. Have you, the, have you seen the debates, bro? I mean, the WWE, it's gonna be a fucking. Yeah, that, now that would macho. be a that would be a hell of a thing if they were able to get one of the debates in the middle of the WWE ring. That would be crazy. Like, uh, I want to put a parents on. Dude, the Rock be will good. be he'll be he'll be the president of the of the United States with the championship belt. Like oh my god, macho. that would be a dream. Okay. Oh, I love that. I'm the, such a mark the, if that happens. Pre- president Rock says, uh, "Iran, know your role. Shut your mouths." You know, uh, but no, it'd be funny if Rock was the the, the uh, whatever the the the, uh, the moderator. They made Rock the moderator. Yeah. Like Mr. Right Trump, the, Trump, please right. be quiet for a minute. Like let me ask Mr. Biden, go ahead, Bro- Biden, go ahead. He's like I, I've rocked uh, Biden you. My, my, well, uh, here's the thing. Uh, what what Donald just uh, I just shit myself. Oh, <laughs> the Rock, the Rock. Rock, I'm not sure if The Rock heard you, uh, Joe, Mr. Biden, uh, President Biden. Uh, did The Rock just hear you say you shit yourself? And Biden's like, yeah, I, I shit myself. And Rock's like, damn, The Rock, 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 somebody get the president a diaper. Um, that's what he does. He shits himself. His entire re- <laughs> presidency has been shitting himself. You know, and you want four more years of shit, then vote for him. You know, that'd be oh, and the run the rocks like that's pretty good one dollars, pretty good. Uh, the rock, the rock doesn't want to be biased. The rock, you know, the rock, oh my god, you could just listen to the rock moderate Joe Biden and Donald Trump. It would be so good. It'd be the greatest. Oh, it it definitely get people like, back. Where, where's, that, where's that Kamala ass, President ass? Yeah, see that old ass. What's up, girl? Oh man, it'd be good. <laughs> just like just hitting on her. It'd be so good. I'll make another baby. I he was like, I need a what? I've never had a white baby before. Or the white <laughs> women. <laughs> That's right. The the Bi- Joe Biden would not even do a debate, but it's fun to pretend, isn't it? You know, it's kind of fun to pretend. Yeah. Um, yeah. Although I will <laughs> say that Trump did bulldoze him the last time they had a debate, so it didn't. That debate was terrible anyway. I really think that, I think that Trump was not fair to him, even though he sucks and he lies and stuff. Trump was not really fair to him the last time they debated. He just shit all like bulldozed over him. Like, when Trump debated Hillary, it was great because there was a back and forth and Hillary would say something and then Trump would nail her with something. He'd be like, well, because you're an idiot, you know, or whatever. And it was like, oh, my God, that was funny. But, like, when he debated Biden, it was like Trump was on, like, speed or something. And he was, like, just bulldozing over Biden. So it was really weird. Um, I didn't like that debate. So I, you know, but I think now the debate would be really funny because like they would ask questions and Biden would be lost. And then Trump would be an- like answering the questions like a normal person. And Biden would be like, eh, eh, oh. <laughs> I, I, w- I wish, oh Norm- I, I wish Norm McDonald was still alive for this. It'd be really good. It sounds like uh, how Mayorkas took it tonight. Yes. Mayorkas got, <laughs> is gone. The, uh, what is he? The transportation secretary guy. Homeland Security. Yeah, home, like he's gone now. Good job, brother. You fucking made the country unstable. Get out. <laughs> yeah. Mayorkas. Oh, more like border, more so. like <laughs> um <laughs> but no. <clears throat> I mean, bro. I should I no, do, they, do might, I, they might Let me ask, they, do I have to I, change? I, do I have to like change my like register to vote? If I change like uh, cuz I don't even know what I'm I'm supposed to register, right? 
You need to register. Oh, man. Uh, I stopped wait, voting a while are you, ago. Are you ready to go to jury duty again? That's right. See, I don't want to go to jury duty. Well, I... I, I, oh, I, I, I know how to fix that. Just say you're racist. That's how I stopped voting I know. to jury duty. You're right. That, <laughs> that's right. But then it could... You know what, though? I don't want to do that now in this day and age because then it could come back to haunt you someday later. Like, fi- like you know, 15 years later. You're in a, a store. Oh, like this, yeah. like this show won't? No, well, I mean, like, no, I can disprove everything from this show. It's not a big deal. But, like, if I, on the record, in front of a fucking law and order, go, like, well, you don't want me to be on the jury because I hate this type of people. Like, they'd be yeah, like, like, oh, you shit. You swore on the Bible. So now it's, like, Jeez. now it's now it's 15 years later, and a guy out of nowhere looks at me in a supermarket and goes, you just call me the N-word? And then he punches me in the face and starts beating me because he's a psycho. And this, by the way, this happens all the time nowadays. It's on YouTube. You can go see the videos of people just assaulting white men and saying that they said the N-word when they didn't. And they just use it as an excuse to hurt somebody. Um, and so then what would happen is we would go to court. And, and I, w- I would be like, I did not say that. Like, this guy just assaulted me out of nowhere and is yelling at me as he's uh, beating me down saying, you, you said this. And, like, so then his lawyers would say, like, well, you committed a hate crime and said you were going to kill him and came at him and were calling him slurs. So he defended himself and and whatever. And then they would be like, also, uh, 15 years ago, like, in the court, like, blah, 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 you said you hate, blah. Oh. And it was like, oh, my God. And I'd lose. And I would I just got beat up by a guy who said I was a racist. And this comes back to haunt me 15 years later, all because I wanted to get out of jury duty. So for that reason, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah, I mean that. Well, that's Damn, where you that got sounds like the opposite of a fucking Pauly Shore movie, right? There. <laughs> yeah, it sounds yeah, like a movie or something. Tech, you got to turn your life into TV and constantly record yourself. That sounds like a, the end of a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode. Like the the whole episode is Larry talking to his lawyer about eh. And by the way, that happened in Curb Your Enthusiasm in 2004. In an episode, Larry says he hates black people, so that's why he couldn't be a juror. So how great! And by the way, Larry David, if you're watching, you screwed up because uh, he already did the last season. How great would it be yeah. in the last season, the last episode, the last season of Curb Your Enthusiasm? Larry's the whole the whole like last three episodes are him talking to his lawyer about the case. I, I I didn't do anything. The guy jumped me. I got a black eye and all bruises everywhere. He has nothing. Nothing's wrong with him. How do they not know that like he's a bad guy? Like he jumped me. And the lawyer's like, well, Larry, they're saying that you know that you know you called him the N word. Well, I did. I didn't do that. I I was I was in there shopping for for fruit vegetables and all this stuff. And like and then it would be great at the end of the you know they're in the courtroom and him and his lawyer are like we're in agreement we're going to win Larry they've got nothing here this guy you've got all the bruises the assault this guy has a record you've never you know really done anything so far i think we're going to be good um and then all of a sudden at the end they literally play or or read the testimony of the guy from 2004 who's like Larry yeah. said quote i don't think i would be a good juror considering you know i hate the n words which is what he said on the show, <laughs> and then and then and then they zoom in on Larry David, and Larry's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and that's how this show ends, bro. And it's like this huge callback to that episode, bro. That would be so fucking. Damn. Why? Come on, Larry. That'd be so good. One bro. more season. One more season. We can do one more that's- season. And then, it, but it would be great ending like that because remember Seinfeld ended, and then Seinfeld ended in jail with them all in jail. So this would end yeah. with David going to jail <laughs> for a hate crime. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> Bam! I sent you to, <laughs> bro. Come on! Oh my god! That's fucking great. I would be <laughs> That's how you start carrying a body cam like the cops, bro. And then if anybody does get in an altercation with you, just compliment their hygiene as they're kicking. Your ass. I'm like, oh, that right. hurts, but oh, you smell really great. And oh, I, you shave your eyes. <laughs> oh, my God, bro. You smell really great. Why can't they do this? Oh, I got literally got the part. Have you ever been the victim of a serious crime? My cousin once stole an Almond Joy from me. It was upsetting at the time, but. Um... I don't think that would be considered a serious crime. Is there any reason you can think of that you'd not be able to decide this case in a fair and impartial manner? I don't know if I could be impartial, Mr. Condon, given that the defendant is a Negro. 
<laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, bro. And then it would be funny too if when they were reading his like what he said like did you, you know, you didn't you didn't go to jury duty uh 2004, you know, you didn't go to jury duty. You weren't selected. You were a juror, but you were ended up leaving. You were dismissed. Why is that, Larry? Do you remember? Like um I I don't know. I don't recall. You know, they didn't they didn't pick me. I don't know. It was because you said that you couldn't be impartial because the defendant was black. But more importantly, do you remember that? I I don't know. I don't think. In fact, quote if and then they said the N word instead of ne- <laughs> he's like, I said Negro. I said Negro. I didn't say that. No, I didn't. I didn't say that. I didn't say. So the you do I-O-G-R. remember. So you do. So remember. you do. Yeah, like oh, like boom, boom, boom. <laughs> like it'd be so good. I sentence you to six months in a in a facility for a hate crime misdemeanor and seventy hours of community service. Oh God, it would be such a crazy callback. I don't know if I could be impartial, Mr. Condon, given that the defendant is a Negro. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, the judge! <laughs> I don't know, bro. That would be come on, bro. End the show with him going to jail. It'd be be great. That would be a great call, man. And uh, oh, even better! And yeah, you could double down on it. Ghost from the coast. You could have it like, like somebody's outside, and they're like, "Larry, I support you, man. Like, I, I really, I support you. I, you. You're not a criminal. You didn't do like this is terrible. What happened to you?" And like he switches hats with the guy, and he doesn't realize it's a Donald Trump hat for some reason. And this so that that joke's been going the whole episode too, where they switch hats, and so now he's got that the hat and fall, you know, whatever the fuck it fall, like he's at lunch. All you know the lawyers break and stuff like that. And and he's trying to tell them like, yeah, I'm not a racist person, like anything. It had nothing to do with that, you know. And they're not in the courtroom anymore. They're at the luncheon or whatever. And obviously the other guy's lawyers there, and other people are there. And Larry's like, no, no. But then he see the lawyer sees in his pocket or whatever the hat says MAGA, and the lawyer looks up and like, Ugh, and he shakes his head. And like, they, it's just like you could pile on to this like in so many things. Like it'd be great. Oh, somebody oh. say Negro. Oh, what's up? It's Half black, Rustafa. Well, aren't you part black and part Viking? That's right. I got a little bit of black in me, but I don't like to parade it around like you know what I mean, like some white people would do. Well, that's true. I'm, at least I'm not that white. Um, no, yeah, yeah. So, what's going on? Um, you know, we're just hanging out Tuesday night. It's kind of a quiet night tonight. There's not many people on the show. The donos it's are been quiet. a quiet day. It's been quiet. Yeah, it's a really quiet day because, like, it was supposed to be a snowstorm, and then we didn't get nothing. Um, oh, we got oh, we got snow down here. We got snow, but not like it melted as soon as it came. Yeah, they, like they, it literally they, came they were, at like five o'clock in the morning. They said the 12, twelve inches. It was like melted four hours later. They canceled school. They canceled my work. They canceled everything. There's going to be a foot of snow, and t- and we got two inches. Like, so I mean, basically, you're like the Florida now of the uh, North, uh, the New England coast, basically. Yeah, there's nothing. It's, it's pretty much all gone wow. right now, like you just said. I mean, you're you're not far from me. So, in fact, you guys got probably a little bit more, maybe, right? I don't know. We got we got about nine to eleven inches. Oh, but yeah. again, it's like I mean, again, it's still residue, but it's like gone. Yeah, but you see, Rostov, the they were telling us here. Like they were, they were projecting twelve feet here, like twelve to fifteen inches or something like that, and so school shut down, work shut down, and we got like two or three inches, and then it disappeared just like you just said, that quick. I, I so I don't think ours maybe melted as quick, but so you did get what we thought we were gonna get. Yeah, we pretty much. Get. But again, but again, living in Jersey, you kind of expect this at any given point. I mean, yeah. again, we're not freaking Minnesota. We're not. You know, living up in like you know North Dakota or anything like that, but like yeah, we we could still get hit pretty hard if you know if Mother Nature wants to have her way. I sent my boss. I sent my boss a picture that I just said weatherman fail, bro. I've never, <laughs> I've, I, I have never seen my work shut down. Like I've never seen them be like, yo, it's gonna be a mess. We're not no work tomorrow. That's never happened. And, and all, all of a sudden, like the boss is probably outside in his freaking you know swim trunks, like just going, yeah, fuck it, we're just gonna. <laughs> Just yeah. Kick back and 
drive drink a cold one right now. I'm tired of y'all. Yep. <laughs> I don't know, man. And the weathermen are getting buried out here. Like legit people are just the memes on Facebook today from everybody is like it's pretty funny. But I'm like, hey man, why is everyone complaining about this? Because as far as I'm concerned, fuck it. Like the kids got to stay home. I got to stay home. And I wasn't feeling good. I had the sciatica and so I was still recovering from that. So I hey, need how's I, that feeling? It's a li- it's a little bit better, a little bit better, and so it, actually it's it's better, it's a lot better. Actually, I take it back. But it, but earlier today it was a little bit better. Then it got better and better. You know what helped was whacking off and taking ibuprofen. Like it's like the combination of that just gets rid of it. I don't know what it is. Wax your carrot and then take ibuprofen. So basically, you're like red in the face now. You're expecting, you know, you didn't have to go, you know, to get a suntan anywhere to get red in the face. You're just red in the face by just doing yeah. the nasty and just telling everybody your business. Damn. Yeah, Oof. but you know, I could have, and uh, I, you know, we could have used work. You know, obviously make more money, but um, whatever. It's it's uh, the, I got to hang out with my kids a lot today, so that was cool. It's like one of like those awkward moments where you haven't like hung out with the kids in a while. It's just like so. Yeah, no, it's not. I, I see. You know, I I see them enough, but we had we actually had a lot of drama here today because. Oh, it was awful. It was actually kind of bad for a while. In fact, I have a headache from it because I was yelling. See, that's why your face is red. You say it ain't jerking off. Is you having an argument in a pissing match with somebody? Well, yeah. My daughter um, took Leah's credit card <laughs> and bought like six, $60 worth of some virtual game thing. But so the, she literally <laughs> took her card and entered it in and spent all my wife's money it's all gone like and then my wow. wife, so my wife wow. my wife gets a fraud alert like and she's like oh and so she files a fraud thing like and, and she like, tries to find her credit card she's like who's got my credit card yeah it's like well who are these charges from and then she figured it out and i was like so leah was like flipping out on on my daughter and my daughter's oh. like saying she didn't do anything, and we're like, "Yeah, you did." You know, yeah, you know, denial's a hell of a thing when you're, you know, a teenager. Didn't your son do this too? And no, he got the well. Money no, back what? What? Like my son? Yeah, my son did it like sort of by like accident ish. Like he sort of just pressed the button, like, "Oh, I'll do this." But once he got a talking to about that, he never did it again. But my daughter is notorious for. Taking oh, she's grounded for at least you know a couple weeks, man. Because like, yeah. dude, that's just oof. yeah. That's I was like, she's rough, man. You just say, Here's a Nintendo. You can't get online with it, but you could play. It. Dude, that's it. she is rough dude. though. Like, she does a lot of stuff. That's like, what are you doing? Like, the boys don't do this. Like, like I said, Finn will never does it. Never did it again, ever after after that one time of making a mistake. And I, I think it was a bit of a mistake. He's never done anything like it ever again. The my boys uh-huh. will not take anything from anyone. Um, they're well, so the good. oldest. I mean, the oldest is really chill out. I mean, Finn is kind of chilled out, but like you know, yeah. again, he's still he's still learning. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And like he's, he's still at that age where, you and know. he's young. He's young. At, he's young. He's a young person. He's not, you know, he's an eight year old, but he kind of like acts six ish. You know. Um, yeah. But, I mean, doesn't really everybody? I mean, that's yeah. kind of no. Everybody's common. everybody's different, you know. Everybody's so different. Like my daughter acts older than she s- seems to be at times, but she's what, also what one. If she only did this because she heard you fucking going. Oh, we made ten thousand dollars, Leah. Yeah, yeah that's probably. Yeah, that, I can see that. No, yeah. no, it's not that. It's just she's just being bad. Like it's a bad thing to do. Um, Aww. so she lost her phone, and she's like, "Well, what happens if I don't have my phone and I get like abducted?" I'm like, well, you, you would get abducted. Oh my God, a smart ass. I was like, I love her. If you had your phone, you got an air tag on you. I, that's why I said, I'm like, you can get abducted with your phone. That doesn't matter. Exactly. <laughs> and I said, you plus, I'll, you're, plus I, I'll give you the benefit of the doubt that you you'll be like, you know, Liam Neeson and Taken. I will find you. Oh yeah, bro. It wouldn't. And besides, we pick her up. But it's like, you of know, course. You'd be, but it's like you're. What do I do without the phone? I'm like, you know, we went to school without phones, right? Like, you know that, right? Like, she's like, oh. And I'm like, not everybody has a phone. You're older than phones? So, yeah. yeah, She's going to lose. So, she's already, you know. But but you know what's great about that is, like, watching her tonight while she was grounded for this um, is that she drew all these pictures and did all this drawing stuff. So, it's like, see all the stuff you do? 
when you don't have your phone. Although I will say she already does that stuff. She does she does everything. She's so all over the place. But she'll like wreck the bathroom with makeup and stuff. Then she'll go somewhere else like a tornado. It's a tornado, bro. And she has ADD and she has my thing, which is I do things like this too. Like I'm a I'm, I w- want to say that it's like I'm unintentionally selfish, like with with a lot of things. Uh-huh. Like, right, right. I don't, you know, like I take things for granted and I make a mess and I then I get off and I do something else. Like, and yeah. I do that, and so I know that that's like a disability, like a you know that's a problem I have. And I know that, like, I leave cabinets open or I leave some things around or I, I go and decide I want to go play guitar right now. So I pull out all my instrumental stuff and I start doing something. And then all of a sudden I go, oh, wait, I've got to do something else. I forgot. And I put it down and I don't put it back. And then, it, you know, at some point yeah. I have to, you know, I have to put things back at a different time. Well, she's still young, so she's doing that. But but she's forgetting the cleanup part and forgetting the, uh, you know, the part yeah. where it's like, hey, you can't just spray food coloring everywhere to make some powder thing you saw on TikTok and then not clean it up, you know, and you shouldn't be oh, using dude. food coloring anyway. At least, not, at least you're not like my dad back in the day because you got to understand he would work like 17-hour shifts, right, or 16-hour right. shifts depending on the, the day. And he would come home and, like, he'd wake up in the middle of the night, eat dinner or whatever the hell, right, and he would be leaving the plates underneath the couch. Oh, my God. What? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my yeah, God. Yo, straight up. No, no, because the thing is, yep. she knows that he needs to clean, how right? Was he, couch, like, oh, no, 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 no. We had a decent, we had a decent sized house at the yeah. time. This is when I was growing up in a house. And you got to understand, like, when you used to be, like, working as a cop, and now you're working for, like, General Motors at the time, like, dude, you're making good money, but they're keeping you, like, slave labor yes. on tap, especially if, if you got to co- cover somebody else's shift. And there's nobody else to do that but you, and you're trusted by the boss to do it. So you go in, and then, of course, you're coming back 5 o'clock in the morning sometimes, maybe 2 o'clock in the morning, whatever. And then you do your thing. You go to bed or you make love or whatever you do. You wake up three hours later. You do it all over again. So <laughs> What was, he, what dude, was my, he doing there at General Motors? He was – um two things. He was on the line, but then he was also doing, like, office work. So, like, oh, okay. he was, like, kind of, like, back and forth. He was, like, an in-between, especially when somebody was, like, screwing up. They always call them in. You're like, dude, get your ass in here. I'm yeah. like, you know, my dad's trying to spend time with me and my brother. And he's just like, fuck off. So um, he goes in, he does the thing. But then, of course, General Motors closed and he had to get another job. So it was just like left the left the pension on, you know, being an officer. And then it was just like, yeah, we're kind of screwed for a little bit. But we cleaned up. It was cool. I And I that happens. You know, people who called him on the plates. Was it was it mom or you or somebody who was the one that was like, oh, you know, stop oh, with dude, the my, mo- my mom. You got to understand my mom's like what? Like, you know, at the time she was like, you know, five, you know, three. Now she's probably like four eleven, dude. But she can literally make you feel three foot tall. Like that was my mom. That's still my mom. Yeah. Uh, but. You know, it's one of those cases where as a guy, like, you know, especially when you when you do something like, let me give you an idea. So like my dad was a hippie. Right. So basically, you know, smoking weed to him was like nothing. But even as a cop, he was just like, I would still do it anyway. But that's also another reason why I also accuse cops for saying, oh, you don't think any of your guys smoke herb or ha- or your judges or your lawyers like, yeah, they yeah. do. And <laughs> yeah, because there, it's not that they're against it. It's that they're like, well, my job is find people that smoke marijuana. I don't care. It'd be like a fisherman. Like, I'm going to ticket fishermen for whatever reason but you're still a fisherman yourself it's not even about that it's about oh i can do this so i do it but you you yourself agree that it should probably be legal but right right but you know the funny thing is it's like even you know because at the time you know he was and again this is where the adhd comes in right so (laughs) if he's smoking a j after like probably left one of the plates underneath the couch again and he's in the computer room because he's a you know dude freaking ingenious when it came to computers and this is like really early on in the 90s where computers were like going to be the new thing. And um, my mom catches him smoking a joint. And he's like, what the hell are you doing? Blah, blah, blah. And my dad's like, what? I'm freaking hysterical right now. We got kids. They're not going to be doing this stuff. I'm like, well, too bad. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? So I yeah. get it. Like, you know, again, you're, you're misplacing things, you're doing things, and then you get called out on it, which is not wrong. It's just, you know, it's just got to be aware. And again, I hope that, you know, yes, yeah, he kind of bounces out of that. It's just repetition, man. That's all yeah. it is. And that's what I, I mean, I do that. And yeah, you'll get better as you get older with it. You just, you really do. You get more calm as you get older, so you do better with it. But it's still something I do. Like, I leave, you know, a little bit of a storm sometimes. But I also do a lot of picking up now. So she'll get out of it and everything, but we're just trying to, you know, explain like don't do. You no, know, it's hard. She's so, um, 
uh, what's stubborn or whatever is the word. Yeah. Yeah. She's yeah. just like Leah, but it's like with a war path mentality like me, but, but, uh, but, but like super stubborn. Like how many times have I said sorry to my wife? Probably a million. How many times have yeah. my, my wife said sorry to me? I don't know how many times Leah has said sorry Very to me. Very few. Yeah, it's like Very few. <laughs> three, four, five. It might be five. I would go five if I had to. In 17 years, Leah has said sorry to me, I think, five times. And I've said sorry to her like a million times. So yeah. when so when I say sorry, it doesn't mean much, probably. But when she says sorry, bro, there was one time where... Um, also, my wife isn't like a words person, like isn't a person that's like will say like, oh, I'm sorry. She'll actually do something to show you she's sorry, and she'll show she'll, she'll show her love language basically. Exactly. So like, but but her even her love language of giving you something to say I'm sorry has only happened about f- probably three or four times, right? So there's been like three to four times where she said I'm verbally I'm sorry, but there's been about three or four times where she like showed she was sorry. And I'll be honest, bro. There was one time I forget what it was. But, like, Leah kind of did something that was kind of crappy or whatever. And, uh, and it wasn't, it's probably not that big a deal, but it was kind of crappy. And I just felt like shit because of it. And I didn't, whatever. And I don't remember what it is now. And it wasn't that big a deal, really. But, like, I was kind of like, oh, uh, whatever. And, uh, and you know, I'm like, well, she's, you know, never going to be sorry about this. And it's my fault, probably. And fuck me, whatever. Uh, but, like, Leah went out. Um, I, I, and I don't remember everything, but she did a, she did multiple things. But one of the things she did was she bought me, like, something at the store that I'd wanted, but it didn't go right or something days before or whatever, and I was thinking about it. And she bought she bought them for me and then left them on my computer desk. I think it was, like, chocolate oh, okay. or something. But, like, that caught me off guard. And it's not because of the thing, because it's not that big a deal, that you went and bought me a couple of Hershey's, I think it was. Um, it was that she remembered that from a few days ago and that she went there and then that it was there like as a, a sorry type of thing. And like, holy shit, bro. I like, I think I was bawling. <clears throat> I was crying over it. Like it was crazy. Cause like, that's how rare, like it, it, it was, it was like amazing. The like Leah well, was the thing, Well, that's saying, the thing, right? It's like, if you expected it all the time, it's not as special, you know what I mean? But at least in your case, I mean, again, it's it's commonplace for the male to be like, all right, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to surprise her, maybe do this or try that. Maybe she might not lock it, whatever. But for you, though, to receive in that way, as again, as you said, is rare. Well, there's a reason for that because a woman doesn't necessarily have to do that all the time, not necessarily because she doesn't care. Mm-hmm. It's just that, again, she just wants to – in not to say necessarily in Leah's case, but many women just want to keep men on their toes right? because – in a lot of ways, women want to run everything. That's right. just in their being. They want to run everything. But then you got to realize, though, it's a two-way street. And that's why there's friction because if a woman overproduces or overdoes this and overdoes that, even when she thinks she's not, then it becomes like, okay, we got communication failure. Yeah. Like, it's uh, – I think it works great for us because – if you gave me too much attention in, in a break, I would I would fail and run wild. You know what I mean? Like I would run wild with I'm great and I'm, this is fine. I can do whatever I want. But like you just said, she's pushed me over the years so much that I, I may not have done what, you know what I mean? I would have said, oh, let's just stay at my mom's house and fuck it. You know, like, you know, that sort of thing. But because I know what she expects, it's like I push harder <laughs> because of that. Right. So that's good. And uh, but yeah, but also just knowing that like I need like to get that was like, wow, this is like wicked, like like a huge validation that this person likes me still and like loves me and cares. Like it's like a huge like, you know, built up thing like for me and like multiple times where she's done it and I'm like blown away because it's so rare for her to do that that it was like yeah. super special. Like I can't, it's like, I don't know, man. It's like one of the, it's like, there's like 10 moments in your life where you were like, this is like unbelievable. And whatever those moments are, like seeing your kid born, maybe you went to WrestleMania or something. I don't know. Like some crazy moments. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, y- yeah. I was just, I was just going to say, it's like, you know, one of those things where it's just like eventually, you know, the payoff does come. But again, even with the payoff, you got to understand that 
you have to really absorb that entirely because the thing is it will may not come for it may not come for months it may not come for years so that's why when it does happen you know you embrace the hell out of it especially as a guy because again yeah. we're, dude, we're basic we're basic cable you know what i'm saying yeah and they, and, got, and they, they got the premier holy shit package you know and usually the women are right so like it's like normally yeah. like they are right or whatever there's some kind of valid thing there and yeah they're looking for security you know the women want security so in that security they're looking for you like you said it's not that i know that you said like they demand a lot or whatever and they run everything and they they run it and demand it because they want to have that security so in order to do that they've got to be someone kind of running the deal so that you're out there doing what you need to do and they do what they need to do and then everything works right but if you're not doing something you know they're going to freak out you know, so they're going to push well, you. Well, that's the those are the women you got to the women that do it over the top. Those are the women you got to watch out for. Right. Yeah. You got to be careful. Like, you got to watch out for left that, eyes out there. Burn your house down. Oh, my God, dude. The psychopathic nature of delirious, just like disillusioned, you know, women like like the expectation is so high for certain women right now. For example, I don't mind that as far as like, you know, if a woman says, OK, I expect this, I expect that. That's cool. You communicated that with me. But just to assume that a man's going to do that for you, especially if you're liking him at first sight, bad move. Well, you know what's weird, too, is nowadays with all the feminism stuff that's been going on, and quite honestly, the feminism stuff has been over the top recently, right? The last 10 years, 15 years, the propaganda or the the feminism stuff has gone way too far. It's almost like they literally legit hate men. However, what's weird is... Right now, like you just said, there's an abundance of women who are like clueless. They're just like they they're over expecting. They're expecting like you to just like they're looking for some for guys that pretty much don't really exist. You know, in the regular gene pool out there, you know, they're looking for all this crazy treatment and money and things and like expectations. Argue. What was that? And I yeah, it's like, it's, with gold diggers and just gold diggers have a bigger. Oh my god! I thought now. you said something else. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, that did not come through Discord the right way. Gold no, digger. dude. I, I'll tell you this, man. Gold like, diggers, like man. Uh, <laughs> wow, that sounded mean, so weird. Uh, yeah, no, no. no, no the, 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 the arguments, the, the arguments, I swear, come from a place of trauma, especially on a woman's side. If she dealt with either like a bad, you know, a bad, mm-hmm. uh, you know, boyfriend or husband or even father at times, because again, trauma. You know, when there's not like a male figure around to lead or to lead by example maybe it was, maybe that. it was too much maybe dad was giving them too much you think or that, too little or yeah, too little you're right because, it could be either one i'm not a psychologist but it could be yeah it's like veruca salt yeah. and like i worry about that because i give my daughter a lot of things and i take care of her and i'm like maybe this is i'm part of the problem i'm, I'm doing too much uh, no no, no it's, it's not even it's a gift thing it's it's literally, uh, you know, discount yourself yeah right don't get discount yourself it's really the communication factor it's what is it is because remember you know uh forgive me for asking but how old is she my daughter is 10 10 okay so she's in the tween age phase she literally is coming out of that childhood-esque mind but she's still as you said she's still kind of there but that's that's okay because again she's gonna start to understand as she gets to like 11 12 literally the buck stops at a certain point because at the end of the day if she's expecting so much and again because as as children are going to, you know, again, evolve within like the next, like, you know, 20 to 50 years, the instant gratification level is going to be so freaking apt that the expectation of just receiving things is just going to be like legit. Like you, you feel like you want to be a freaking, you know, native American just living off the land and just not be attached to Western civilization and its lifestyle. Like that's how apt it's going to be. But that being said, the communication starts with, well, if that's what you want as far as an item or a gift or this and that, okay, but what are you doing based upon what we are doing in our relationship as father and daughter and that whole thing? Because the bonding outweighs the item, ultimately. Right. But if it's not strong enough, then it's going to show based upon whether it be isolation, whether it be distance, whether it be trauma of some kind that's not talked about and that can actually be a generational thing from a spiritual point of view that's with me but i'm just happy I, yeah. no i'm just I, happy I just you know go ahead good ramon <laughs> now i just think it's gold diggers and people are just noticing now because i have a platform on youtube because back when i was dating in my 20s i never experienced one but hmm. i saw a lot of like my friends like acquaintances co-workers go through that and like 
They didn't even matter what we told them. Be like, hey, she's kind of gold digging you. No, no, she cares. You know, what happens? She ends up cheating on them or going for another guy that has more money. But I mean, yeah, but they've always been around, in my opinion. I, I've yeah, seen they've always before. been around too. I just well, think there's an abundance of regular women that are like this. It's like you're not that. Like you're, I don't know, bro. You, but it's gonna be hard to to. I'm just, I wouldn't care. I don't even care because I see those girls. I wouldn't want that girl. I wouldn't want to date that girl no. anyway. Like, no, honestly, I just want to meet and just be around intelligent women that are just as just as myself, great listeners. Because if you're a great listener, then you know you're going to have to respond, not react. Because the amount of women that I've been around that just react on impulse have no freaking filter. And again, people say, oh, you know, you're looking, you know, for strong women. But then when they come around, no, that's not being strong. That's literally being idiotic and not processing information around you. And you're just rushing into something. You don't do that. Um, why are they putting out a, they're putting out an article about Tomb Raider one to three? Like this. Oh, the rematch series? Yeah. Yeah, uh, they're all right. They're just like HD cleaned up. I mean, they still have their PS1 like graphics. Well, or no, like the Tomb Raider, I guess like this big, a lot of Tomb Raider like people on Twitter, they're like tweeting out the game in this collection contain offensive depictions of people and cultures rooted in racial and ethnic prejudices. These stereotypes wait, are who, deeply who, Wait, who's greenlining the wokeness on this? I don't know. Tomb Raider tweet. Get that art article, man. I mean, it's all it's all in the wording. If they had said it like this, um, rather than moving removing this content, we have chosen to present it here in its original form, unaltered in the hopes that we may acknowledge its harmful impact. <laughs> like what? Like, so people just, dude. All these woke people are in charge of everything we love. Everything we oh ever, er, everything we ever loved, is is now taken from these these people have it. And they want to erase it from us and I then give us some. Article, <laughs> yeah, they want to give us some bastardized version of it. It's like. Well, it, like if you, okay, if you're going to bring it back and you want to do such and such, I mean, again, just leave the original dialogue, read, uh, leave the original content of such and such. And if you want to put a warning on the label f for this and that, like every gaming console in history, or sorry, every game and just Dude. in general. Do so. Look at this. The, this isn't you know even that. Bought. They're not even off. Like the, one of the major things they're talking about is how the tribal people were depicted or whatever. Um, you can see. So my, then why were you, you can see my camera, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So look at this. I mean, like, look at this guy. That that's that guy. Then this is that guy. Right. And then here's the South Pacific Islanders. I mean, it's. Is it, and then here's the, it's like, is this that far off? Like, I mean, that crazy? Like, well, yeah. it, it depends on how they're depicted in the sense of like, okay, are you saying that they're savages to the point where there's no redeeming quality? I don't know. Like, I don't remember the, I don't. Like, that's not explained to me. Like, if you're only just giving me cliff notes just because you want to be woke for the sake of being woke, then you're an idiot. They're just dressed up li kind of like those people would be dressed up. Like, it's white, white people have lost their minds so much. That, like, basically, they can't stand when you put a culture in a game. Like, they can't it's stand when... Bears. They want to get... They, they, it's like, this is some weird, like, inverted thing where, like, let's get rid of culture by saying you put... Using culture is racist. Like, we'll do that and we'll get rid of the culture by doing that. It's like, so now we have, like, no Aunt Jemima and no anything else anywhere because, oh, well, that was... You, you know, using any kind of culture is a racist thing because it's a stereotype thing. Well, but that's what the, this looked like. That, you know, it's... Uh, what hey, is going on? Frog is a moron. <laughs> Scissor me, Joe! <laughs> Guys, have you been noticing all the trans mass shooters all of a sudden and the media is sweeping it under the rug? But God forbid it was a straight white man. And Joe, I agree, Peacock sucks on Xbox. Well, here's the real conundrum, uh, Seabass the Beast. Thank you, Seabass. Um, he has been a beast all week. But here's the real thing, the real conundrum. The shooter, it, the shooter is trans, but, like, the shooter, I believe, is now Shit bomb. a white male. <laughs> Ryback can solve all our problems. Ryback for president and winner of Montize This 450 as VP. Unless winner is under 35. Uh, thank you, ha Haystacks Monet. 
Ryback can solve all our problems. Yeah, imagine Ryback as president. Yeah, today I'm going to kill people. That's what <laughs> I'm going to do. Um, going back. Oh, so go ahead. No, it's a remaster no one asked for. That's what that's what Ghost from the Coast said. And, uh, yeah, real quick, the, the shooter, the trans shooter the other day, I think was, is like, I don't know, like, actually, isn't the trans shooter say they're a white female or a male or something like that? But Was, this the, was this the Joel Olsen uh, deal? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I was t- I saw a video at the time, and again, it could have changed. I don't know, but one of the officers said in the in the uh, press or to the press that the woman w- or whomever you want to call it, was not identified or w- come to any any evidence that it was a trans person or wh- somebody who identified as trans. But again, that's just what what I know. It could be completely fabricated just to protect you know whatever. But again, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what's going on, but um, this person looks like I can't tell. It looks like it's a kind of a looks like a girl, but I I think they said that they're a man, but they're Hisp- yeah. they're like Hispanic or Muslim or something. So they're uh, I believe they're a Hispanic woman, maybe that is now a man. But they're but they identify, I think, as a white male. Oh, but that's, Jesus. that's not a white male. That's either a Hispanic or Muslim female. I don't know. Like that I'm confused. So I don't know. I'm more confused now but the, than I was already. Yeah, the crazy thing about it is that's what I mean though. The new the mainstream news is not talking about this. So so here it is. But he said investigators determined through interviews and the past police reports Moreno identified as a female. So Moreno identifies as a female, but that's a guy. So it's really a guy. But but I but he identifies as a female. So they're calling it a female. So it's like but but why do we have to give a fuck when you're a shooter and a murderer? Like I you know, who gives a fuck what they were? What were they? You know, like whatever. It just, um, it just gives the, the right wing media just a, a more shots just to go after almost every community based upon the alleged associations of this person and what this person identified with and also d- identified as, you know, whatever you want to call, you know, herself, himself, whatever. I mean, again, I'm at a point where it's just like, dude, the deed is already done. Concentrate more so on like literally the murder and not on the person i mean yes the personality based on the mental capacity because really realistically speaking this is all really mental health at this point because it, there's just this trend of at first it was like in the whole part of the 2000 teens whenever there was like a college shooting or wherever there was just a regular school shooting or a move that movie shooting or whatever it was just all mainly you know and, and i would always get in trouble for this but i would say there's always caucasian males doing it yeah, but I, it was a fact. So I don't, it, I don't, know, I don't ever look it, at know. whenever there's like a shooting. I never get that obsessed with their background because right. I, I, I always just think it's like, like th- I, all you have to do is think about this. Every time a white male goes and shoots a bunch of people, like at, as a white person, you feel bad when you see a whole bunch of people being like, of course, it's a white guy. So and every time you're a black, a black man and some black guy does something terrible, then you have to listen to all these people saying like, oh, this is what black people, you know, whatever. Black on black crime, the whole nine. And and if you're a Muslim, you know, and some Muslim does some crazy, awful thing, then if you're a Muslim, you're like, oh, here we go. Like, um, it's going to be, you know, so like, but the fact of the matter is, you can go grab right now. You can go look up trans shooters. You can go look up white shooters. You can go look up black shooters. And you could literally, like, create a page where you're like, look at all, what do these all have in common? And I've seen everyone do that. So, like, I just don't care. I don't look at them and go, that's what they do. Because there's so right, many right. different people that do this. And really what the real commonality is, isn't white, isn't black, isn't Christian, isn't Muslim, isn't trans the real common denominator is they're mentally ill. Exactly. That's all it is. Like, nobody in their um, right mind is doing this. So she, she was a he, but he had a kid? I don't know. 
I, I don't know. <laughs> that's All I know the kid. That's the kid. Kid. They said that the kid that got shot was her kid. Oh. Know? I mean, I haven't the heard head. that. But like, I would it be? I mean, again, it would be shocking to me. But again, like I said, mental health and not that. being in the right mind. Hmm. They shot their own kid. No, uh, the police shot in her direction, and and her kid was in the way. Oh my the police god! Shot her Wait, kid she took her well, kid you know, to the shooting. The fire. That that, yes. that that was yeah that happened. So the police did fire and you know killed and. But yeah, no, dude, that was actually like, he's in Jesus. he's in critical he's in critical condition. Oh no 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 no! That I'm talking about kid. the you know the, the actual murder. I'm I'm talking like you know that person that actually you know threw fire. Yeah. But um. That was, and by the way, that was actually in transition going into another service. So it was in between services that this was going on. Wait, so this shooter mm-hmm. only shot one person and then the cops shot their kid by no. accident? They shot in her direction and the kid got hit in the head. Oh, my Jeez. God, bro. So, with what, so, so they, so they brought their kid to their own shooting? <laughs> yes. Hey, let me show you how sh- how to, this uh, forty five works. Let me show you; it's pretty loud. Let me Boom. show you. Let me show you how to take out the Jews. Watch this. Oh, brought the rifle. That's crazy. Yeah, take your kid to school shooting day. That's crazy. Um, that is crazy. It was the cops. It was armed citizens. Oh, it wasn't the cops. Okay, so the cops. Oh, I see. So the cops weren't. They the were off duty that- cops at church. Oh, okay. yeah, they're like, they're like security. Oh, that's the other reason you're not hearing anything really about this because somebody, somebody. Dude, I can show, I can show you fucking a bunch of shit because I'm, I live by there. Like, I mean, it's like only a few towns away. You live by Lakewood? Right. Like, I've been watch, I've been looking at all yeah. this shit all day. Yeah, but I mean, but wait, I mean, wait, there's wait. not a lot of news. Same on Lakewood? It. Is that the same Lakewood when um uh what was it? Was it Hurricane Katrina or one one of the hurricanes that was really affecting the South Coast? Basically, there was trying. There was homeless people trying to, you know, get shelter, and they were denied yes, access that's to the, the building. Same one. Wow. Holy yes, that's God. Exact same one. That's crazy. That's why I thought this was fucking hilarious. Wow. Damn. Like, damn. He. She went in there, guns blazing, and uh, they should have did that when it should have just busted through. When that fucking. Well, uh, that's another reason why it's not on the news that. a lot. I feel like it's because like somebody disarmed him with a gun, so. Whenever a gun person stops a gun person, it barely makes the news. I feel like they're like, okay, let's not cover that because new subscriber, not enough people you died. Jeffa uh, Junior, hey Jeffa Junior, thank you for subbing to the channel. What's up, Jeffa? Jeffa, uh, uh, what's up, Chad? Hit that like button. Appreciate it, Jeffa. Cheers to you, and I will. Uh, this does look like piss, but it's not piss. Oh. oh my god! Holy shit, it's been quiet tonight! The ghost from the coast! I'm taking medicine, Joe. I'm trying to wake up. Oh my god. The ghost saving tonight. Man, thank you so much, Ghost from the Coast. So that's all you got, lol faggots. <laughs> now I don't know if he's talking about like us that this is all we got on the show tonight or or that the the other oh, oh he's trying to get back at like the other donators the okay, other donators you. okay yeah, the, the, yeah. The, there's not a lot of donations okay I thought that's what he was talking about but I wasn't sure um but man the ghost see the ghost comes out what, who was calling out ghosts the other day we're talking mad shit to ghosts like hey why don't you donate but, but it was like. It was a D Welsh, maybe, but it's like, bro. I like, it was Welsh. I don't, I don't think yeah. it was Luke. I definitely think like it was Welsh. There was tons of money coming in, though. So why would you know Ghost didn't need to do anything? He was like, well, fuck this. I can take a night off finally, and <laughs> and but so and then look at this. It's a quiet night, and Ghost from the coast, he fucking bombs us, and makes uh, Rage actually uh, make some kind of money. Thank you, uh, the Ghost from the coast, for going fully sponsor on this show tonight. Holy shit! That's yeah. That's what he does. Like at least ten BJ's. Oh my god! I'm, it's so funny you say that. I'm literally passing by a bar that's of the same name. That's hilarious. BJ's. 
Yes. It's oh my god. Well, that, that must be a very strange bar all the time. Like people come in like, yeah, where are they at? Yeah, it's just some interesting uh, looking people. The ghost from the it's coast, the fat. top donator. It's called fat what? Pigs? No. I would say the other word. Oh. But no. Wine? Yeah. The ghost from the coast. Let's go, bro. Let's go, dude, Ghost you're, from you're, the Coast. Honestly, within the past like for two and a half weeks, maybe even three weeks, dude, you've been making bank. Good for you. I know. Thank God. Like I've been. Uh, well, I can't you know what it live. is. The Vince McMahon drama. You know what's happening at Mania. Yeah. Also, a lot of the uh, just you know the back and forth with the title. I mean, like, the dude, Rock. this is doing pretty good. Yeah, dude, everything's up. I mean, I got to tell you, bro, that every it's very it's thank God that they've been doing this stuff. What happened was, dude, all these wrestling fans have come back to watching, so we had a great couple of weeks. I'm sure, I'm not sure how long it will last. It's probably not going to keep going the way it went the last couple of probably, days. Probably, probably will stop at WrestleMania. Maybe. Well, but what the good thing is that we monetize this 450 is pretty built up. You know, we got 444 next week points in the bank. That will be big, and then we've got you know um, got more subscribers. Yeah, we got it's all the numbers are up. Everything is good. The views are up. The the subscribers are up. The donations are up. Everything is up. Even on a Tuesday night when it's late and it's quiet and we didn't really do well as far as donations, you know, we're all sitting here and then Ghost from the Coast still drops the 150 to make it, you know, really an impact. So that's huge, bro. Everybody is supporting the show right now. It's crazy. Chief Wahoo with the 50 gift subs or something. Like Look at the data's up over the last, like, 256,000 views. Um, I had been averaging 80,000 views. Like, dude, the numbers are up. Like, the numbers are up big yep. time. Look at the numbers. numbers Everything is up. up. Everything is green. 256,000 wow, views. Looking. Boom. Green. Leads watch time. Strong. Boom. Subscribers. Boom. Like the map was flat, like pr like kind of this is what it yeah. was, and now boom, 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 like it's been huge. So, yeah, dude, all the numbers are up. So good news, and the Rock is a big reason. Shout out to the Rock, you know. Um, all they need to do now is bring back Stone Cold as well. Bring the Ro Stone Cold back. We get the Rock, um, and unfortunately, we don't, we don't like think about the things we don't have too. We don't have Brock. We should have Brock Lesnar. We don't have Punk. We should have Punk. It's like those are. Those are two big names, and we're still waiting to see if Randy Orton's going to be okay after whatever it looked weird the other night week. There's been no word about it, though. I haven't even heard any rumors. So that yeah, I haven't just, heard anything yeah, from. I haven't anybody, heard anybody even really. I haven't. I don't really go on dirt sheets, but like whatever information that gets like you know leaked out, that's like at least a main source. I haven't heard anything with Randy. It. I mean, I'm pretty sure you know he's okay. It's just like they just want to like you know kind of keep him safe before Perth, you know. Oh yeah, because he's a big thing there. Because I don't think Roman's gonna go. Is that I heard? No. That. Yeah, those are the biggest stars you got. You got. I mean, LA Knight has already become, I guess, a, a big superstar now based upon his momentum from last year. Despite the fact that it's you know kind of slowed down a bit. You got Randy. You got Drew McIntyre, who's an international sensation. So yeah, just keep your guys healthy for the next week and a half. Right. You know. Get through Chamber and then on your way to Mania, which I think at that point you're only going to be about six weeks away. So just try to keep everybody healthy. I mean, still keep them, you know, going, but, you know, don't do crazy stuff on Raw or SmackDown. Yeah, I agree. And every time Cody, I mean, I think it's all in our heads. And that's what you got to, I'm worried that, I'd be worried that it's in the wrestlers' heads right now, that they're worried about getting injured because that gets you injured usually, right? And well, it all started with Charlotte. If you think about it, it really started with Charlotte. She got taken out of the game, and I can only imagine, at least in some sense, that like if that can happen. Six weeks into it, into yeah, I mean, yeah, but it was Charlotte out, right? though. I mean, it was the beginning of like you know the injuries, at least in WWE, because up until that point with AEW, Kenny Omega was out, a few other guys were out, but WWE's been taking major hits. Yeah, and so you're worried about, like, every time Cody goes out there, I get nervous. When Cody is ever out there, I'm like, oh, my God, no, don't, you know. That's a major thing. Him, he, un unlike all the other guys that, like, wrestle, like Drew wrestles very aggressively, kind of like Sheamus, but Cody's a safe worker. He's not doing crazy stuff. Right. Yeah, he does. He's got a certain, so he's got the classic is. style and the WWE style and the 80s style quite a bit with a little bit of a new flair. But we always said that, you know, in AEW, he, he's the one that always had those 
sort of classic matches that I appreciated, especially after all the flip floppy <laughs> stuff all night. So, good lord, Jesus Christ! What the hell was that? What's up? We just heard smashing and crazy noise. That's weird. Well, you're... It was coming from you. Yeah. No, I'm just walking. I, I'm seeing cars oh, like coming by, but not. But, but it's not like big noises. Well, it is over on our end <laughs> from you, <laughs> but it's okay. Oh, it's it's all right. But yeah, it was like <laughs> like that's what we heard. Go back and listen. To oh yeah, well, there's what's probably what's a puddle in there. Yeah, so you're fine. But um, yeah, you're fucking... it wasn't that crazy. But it was just like, what the fuck was that? Um, Valentine's Day tomorrow, Rostafa, are you taking the taking the ladies out somewhere? Friday I am. All right. I'll be good. Okay, that's good. Friday. Everything I tried to find something and then I found things that I wanted to get for Leah and they were all like arriving fifteen on the fifteenth. And I'm like, Oh everything. Oh. Wow. So but, fucking tomorrow's Valentine's Day, we're gonna uh what are you gonna do? Valentine's Day massacre? EW I would like to do the massacre in the bedroom, but um, oh. I don't know. It's going to be a massacre in a. It's going to be a many croning kisses. <laughs> you get your, you're going to get your wings. The I would wings. like to do it. Um, it only shows Joe Gargots and Rostafa and Ramon. What? Yeah, that's that's we got four people on the call. Yeah, Welsh. What's he talking about? I don't know what... It doesn't show you on Discord, Pico? Oh, yeah, I don't see you on Discord, Pico. Why did why did he say Pico? Pico say he was on Discord? I don't see him. You get to see Pantera tomorrow. That's cool, even though it's not really Pantera, but it kind of is Pantera. It's the closest thing to Pantera we're going to get. It's, it's fuck it. It's, it's Rex and Phil, you know, and then Zach Wild, right? Who's playing drums, Wild, though? And then you got Charlie, Charlie from Anthrax. Oh, from Anthrax. Okay, yeah, yeah, Anthrax. okay. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's oh, cool, dude, man. Speaking about bands, dude, did you hear that? Or have you seen the Kitty? Um, uh, fucking, that's coming back. Oh, Kitty. They, they had like a song going on. Yeah, the song sounded pretty heavy. Yeah, Kitty's. I don't think Kitty's gone away. Really, they've been still doing it for. They've been tight. Yeah, they've been. No, they playing. haven't released an album in like thirteen years. Really? Yeah. Oh so this my is god! Like the first album. That they're gonna... Yeah, so I think it's coming out tomorrow or later on tonight. Oh my god, bro! And I've been I've been seeing like teasers for it. That was uh-huh. pretty fucking sick. Honestly, after and, and again, I don't watch the Grammys, but I, you know, I I actually did watch the years. After seeing that, I mean, honestly, I just want to hear like some really good metal and some really good hard rock and a lot of like you know hip hop guys that I don't even know because dude the amount of hate that Killer Mike is constantly getting like all these young dudes they're like who the hell is this guy he took all their awards blah 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 I'm like my dude do some freaking history on your boy Killer and Mike also respect to Dan Elders forever. right yeah, yeah respect to yo, this is another reason dude want to know why all the current well not all of it yeah, but kitty. a lot there of the current is rap is crap is because there's no root to what people got because they don't they don't have an uh you know an influence of people that came before them and have a respect for them to the reason why we're here today everybody's just all into the hype of this is the new deal i'm like okay it's the new deal how long is it gonna last because all these other guys you constantly say that they're old and they don't belong here they're still in the game and yeah they're collecting grammys right yeah uh is there a dude in that picture Joe? yeah there was a guy the that hell? played for a while in kitty uh which is funny because they never had anything but females but they had to make an exception at one point um, you know what I really love? I loved that. Is it Tali- Is it the black girl, the original girl? Yes, Raven. Or, uh, is it Talina or what something? Was, or what was her? Is it Raven? Something. I don't remember her name now. I don't know. I don't remember. She's her name, adorable. Like, I just remember. I know what you're talking about. The, She's the so pretty. Like I lo- like this girl right here, the black girl right here. Yeah. She's yeah. adorable, dude. Like I, I had a huge crush on her when we, we back when we were like fifteen or fourteen when they were first out. Didn't one of them die? I, I think so. I don't remember I, though. I don't. The guy know. looks like a fish. Dude. Look at that beard. Yeah, the guy's trying to look like a tiger or something. He's like, I'm in Kitty. I'll look like a tiger. But yeah, her. Oh, she who is, is yep. that? She is. I think she's really like pretty. Like that's. <laughs> look at her. I she, I, she left the band early on, though. She was only she, after the third or second album. She was gone, I think. Bro, um, I'm really getting into a lot of the the German and um, 
even some of the, there's even some Russian bands that are coming out like with a lot of the female like you know metal vocals and they're uh-huh. phenomenal. Oh yeah, like the death metal vocals. Oh, it's Fallon, I think Fallon Bowman. Yeah, yeah but I, again, uh, I'm not listening uh, into like Tan- the weird. Tan- yeah, I'm not like into Tanya. like the. Oh Anya. Anya. Oh Tanya. Oh Tanya. Her name. Oh okay. No, or, oh, yeah, talking, oh wait, you're talking about Talina. Or Talina. Yeah, Talina was the bass player, I think. I think she's the one that I haven't yeah. seen her in forever. But the the girl with the red hair here, what's her name? I don't remember. She's the one. I was like, damn. That Morgan? Like, no, not Morgan. Morgan's uh, the singer, right? Oh, that's Talina. Right? This that's girl. Talina, the black girl? Or like the mixed race? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I just don't want to hear like, those metal, female vocals. We're I trying to like figure out the, the name of Kitty right now because we had a big crush on her when I was in high school. So we're trying to figure out her name. Wikipedia, yeah, baby. That's, like, Wikipedia. that's at least like after like 99. That's Someone like, do it for me. I'm lazy. Oh, had, I'm lazy right now, too. She had, she had big teeth. Like, see her big smile there? I just thought she was. I just thought yeah, she was. She looked, you know. Is this a, 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 um, an older photo or is this a current one? Yeah, she's these, young. Oh, these are really old. Yeah, this is back when they were. I mean, you know, when I was listening, you know, when we were all listening to music back then, we were like 16. So probably Kitty was like the same age as us. So, you know. Like, we were like, hell yeah, I want to fucking see her. Um, I, dude, I remember I remember when I was, because I, I was in a, a metal band at the time, and we were getting booked. Okay, I think that was Tanya. That was, that was around when we played with, like, actually, this was before we ever played with, like, Kill Switch Engage or Shadows Fall or anybody like that. But, I mean, we were in a band with a real manager with a real goal, you know, and we ended up not doing anything, but we came close. And then the band after that, I came very close. And so the point was, though, back then I was like, fuck, I'm, I'm, I can't wait. One day I'm going to be touring with Kitty and I'm going to fucking figure her out. I don't know. Uh, but <laughs> finger her out. Finger her out, bro. I'm going to finger her out. But, but, now, but now I'm a 39-year-old looking at the same photos that I looked at of them when I was 16 and they're 16, and that's weird. Anybody else? Like, that's – like, your grandfather, even it's not weird because you were sixteen, so that they're like. Oh, that's no. true, like, but it. How weird is that though? That like we were like had a huge crush at the time. We we're like, oh yeah, I want to do her, and now, but now I'm thirty nine, and now those pictures that I, it's like it's it's a conundrum kind of like, like is it bad now that I look at that like, like <laughs> I mean, but it does look weird. Like it does look. Weird. That you're looking. Yeah. For nostalgia purpose, then it's not a problem, right? But it's nostalgia just nostalgia porn. You mean vintage? No, but, it's called vintage porn. But it is weird how when you get and, when you get older and you go back and look at a photo of somebody from like you had a like you might have had a crazy obsession and crush. Oh and yeah, that. of course. But then if you yeah. go, but if you yeah. go back and look at them when they were that age, when you were at your age now, it's weird how you go. Ugh. Like it's and you kind of go like and but then <laughs> but then when you look at but well, that's why you look at them what they look at them now right but then if you look at them when they're older you're like oh because like it's weird it's so crazy how the brain not every time you know everyone's like there's pedophiles out there and stuff like that but I mean mostly your brain is like looking for around your age it's so weird right, how like, that's like, true like more, more of the baby fat like you know you're like you didn't put on weight or anything you're just kind of like you know skin and bone and. Um, you know, and then all of a sudden, like you see yourself ten years later and do a comparison, you're just like, "Holy God, what happened?" Yeah, I look like a well, yeah, baby. Just don't like, have oh. a mirror. It's like, like you don't have a mirror in your house. Like I like, want a mature stuff. looking girl now. It's like you don't want to even look at that anymore. It's funny how that works. It doesn't work like that for everybody. And like I said, there's fucking pedophiles out there. But I mean, like if you look at, I don't know. It's just weird. It's weird how that works. You're like, oh, like I, I don't know. It's, it's, it's. I mean, that's the way it's supposed to work. You know, you're supposed to, like, kind of be looking for something around five years around, you know. But, I mean, rich guys, though, they look for, like, 21-year-old girls when they're, like, 50. So, I don't know. Maybe it's... Yeah, or, so. or Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah. I, I'd say 21's the cutoff. Like, even though you could, like, whatever. Like, even, tw- like, 21... Just look for a beer in their hand. Yeah, look for a beer in their hand. <laughs> hey, you'll bend over. <laughs> Oh my God! Don't turn, don't tell me you're trying to turn into Matthew McConaughey on me. You're trying to turn to Matthew McConaughey in like days and confused. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Hey, it's actually TV. funny because he's a he's an actual he's a professor there, so he did he did stay uh, he did get older and they still they. they stayed oh the God, God, God! Don't do this to me. Oh God, Ugh. yeah, Trish. So so the kitty's bass player died. But it's not the original girl or even the girl after that who was original. It was the girl after that. That's why I didn't really know 
that she died because I didn't really listen to them much when she was in the band. She was the Asian girl. Um, oh, why okay. did she die? Um, I don't know why Alina? she died. No, hope it wasn't, I hope it wasn't an OD or anything. No, it was Trish Doan. How you know? I don't know how she died. Dude, a song. The new song is called uh, "Eyes Wide Open." Oh, and I'm like, isn't that Creed? That's a Creed song. Yeah. Well, maybe they'll maybe, <laughs> maybe no, no. Kitty's gonna do their version of it. With the eyes wide open. I'm about to say, aren't they like touring again? Aren't they like out and about again? Like they like resurfaced within like the past like year or so. Oh no, she was. She did. I think it is yeah. a suicide. By the way, I think it's suicide. Oh, that sucks. Did you see the Paramount commercial? Because yes, oh my god, bro! So yeah, we're, so we're it fucking uh, we're John uh, with Stewart. Patrick yeah, Stewart, Patrick Stewart. Stewart. We're watching the thing, and my daughter goes, "She's like, that's Captain." <sighs> P-. She goes, "That's Captain Picard," and I was like, "That's funny," because she because all all we were doing, all me and my, all me and Leah do is every night go to bed to Star Trek, and usually it's TNG, and then plus the new Picard series. So my daughter knows him as Captain Picard. So when, and then of course my kids love Pepper Pig and all that stuff. So my kids were actually like marking out for that commercial, like when they saw the whole thing. Um, Dude, I, I swear to God, this one you just said, like me and Leah, like you know we, you know just you know go to bed and watch you know Star Trek. I, dude, and I'm not trying to be that guy, but that was pretty much my parents. Like, they were watching Next Generation just back to back, going to bed and <laughs> as soon as my dad came to work, it was right on the TV. So that's, that's so funny. Really weird to be that. I think it's because a big thing is that – what the hell was that? A big thing is oh, that yeah. I grew I up – That was me. It sounds like yeah, me. Yeah, that's you, Gargo. Oh, that's not me. That's I, not me. What is that? What is that? That's not me. Is that you, Chrome? Oh, it, 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 I'm that sorry. That is you. It was me. I, I, hit, I hit the button over here, and it turned on my electric guitar. Hilarious. That is okay. funny. I was like, what the what hell – I no, I was, so I was gonna say like, you know, I grew up watching Star Trek with my dad, and so my mom too. So one of the my favorite things ever was watching the new Star Trek: The Next Generation in bed or in the living room with my parents. So obviously, I just love Star Trek, and I was obsessed with it. And so when my dad died, you know, my mom kept watching it with me, obviously. So that was, you know, whatever. And I think Leah did the same thing with her dad, and so we we just. That's how it is with a lot of people. Everybody just loves Star Trek because of that. And so me and Leah, but it's just rare to find. I feel like it's rare for me to have found a girl. It, it's First of all, it's rare to, I feel like it's rare to find a girl like Leah who will watch Star Trek with you anyway. But I think it's super rare that every night, if if Leah comes up and say I'm watching something else, or I'm watching a YouTube clip or something, or I'm doing something else, and sometimes I do. Leah immediately is like, can you put on Star Trek? Wow. Like, awesome, like, dude. I'm like, wow. Awesome. It's crazy. So it's it's like the comfort show to go to bed to, but we'll also watch it when we're awake. But it's like, yeah, it's weird, man. Like, But it's uh, she doesn't like the new Star Trek, obviously, really, but it's just crazy. But you watch like, the older episodes, right? You watch like you know, se- you know season one through seven. The, oh yeah, everything. Yeah, the the. Oh, that was it. She doesn't love the original series, like the first, you know, TOS. She'll watch a couple episodes of that, but she you know can't really get into TOS that much. But she does love the TOS movies, so it's like. What about Voyager? Because I was a big fan of Seven. Mm-hmm. I mean, I li- I liked Seven in that, but the only reason why I did was because I remember there was one episode, and you probably remember this one. The Rock made a guest appearance. Yeah. And it was like heavily advertised on UPN. Yeah. yeah. You remember that one? Yep. Um, no, no. Uh, Leah, Lo- I think Voyager is her second favorite one. Got it. I, I think- Wasn't that the one that uh, Tom Morello was in too as well? Um, either I can't that. Remember? It was either that or Deep yeah. Space Nine, but I don't remember now. I don't remember. Yeah, it does sound like a vibe. Oh yeah, it was with the. Yeah, because that's the only reason why I watched Voyager that season because I knew The Rock was going to be on that because it was reported in. Uh... Oh God, what what, what was the um? Uh... It doesn't sound like a vibrator anymore. Now it sounds like a guitar. Oh, it was in TV Guide. Yes, it was on TV Guide, yeah. You remember go remember solo when... For solo, huh? Would you want to go solo for solo? Let's go, Gargas. <laughs> Let's go, man. Let's bounce. Really? You want to do Let's this? Let's go, Gargas. You're bringing it. 
I'd have to plug in my shit. <laughs> I can do it. Let's go, Gargots. I'm a drummer, but I'll still do it. I'm a, you know. In a lot of ways, you got kind of do sound like a drummer. I, I, I always use like the Dave Grohl method, and it's like. <laughs> That won't work. Let's go, go. Are you in drop D? Yeah, I'm in drop D right now. Oh, okay, that's what I thought. Yeah, because I mean, you know, being a drummer, what can you play that makes it easier? Drop D. No, dude, like one of my favorite bass players uh, of all time is, and it's kind of actually weird, but um, the bass player for Korn, mm -hmm. he plays it like a drum. He doesn't play it like yeah. a normal bass. Yeah, I would say like, um, I would say I do that. I mean, here's my acoustic though. You know, get the acoustic. This is in drop D. Nice. Like I could never play the guitar if I wasn't in, I can play uh, it regular too. Are, are you playing like Everlong right now? <laughs> All power chords. Do you ever wonder where we would be if we had tried a little harder? Gargots. It seems like yesterday that we were making plans for the future. Gargots. Um, so that's, uh, drop D as well. And that's, uh, yeah, they, they, but you know what, when you're making, the reason why I have the guitars, because people would be like, why do you have guitars when you're a drummer and those, uh, but when I'm making those other instrumentals or songs or like I'm producing a commercial or something when I'm working for somebody or whatever, um, the two things I'd write on is a guitar and a piano, which is not that, cr almost everybody probably does that, but it's just like it's easy to be like piano. Okay, I'm gonna work it out on piano or acoustic first, and then right. I'll t and then I'll take it to the next, you know, to the electric, and then after that I'll start programming all the synthesizers and other things and making it better. Um, and I'll do things, of course, that I could never do live, right? Like I'll do thi like things that are like, oh wow, I could never play that live. I'm not a good player or good at all, but I can you know get those notes out and play that if i'm one at a time a little piece by piece you know piece the verse together then piece the other part together but i could never pull that off live um but i could drum it live you know what i mean like i can drum it or you know obviously what i was just doing i could do live because that was just like power chords or whatever but i mean like you know you're writing something maybe that's more complicated but couldn't do it live um but I could play the drums live, like you said. I could play. I could play bass live or play drums live because there's a beat, a rhythm or something. But like, certainly, it, couldn't play lead guitar at all ever. The only problem that I have with commercial, like when people write songs for commercials, is that you can tell that it's not real drums and that they're programmed drums. Mm. Um, mainly, mainly yeah. because of the feel. Yeah. And mainly because it, it just feels so so exact that even drummers would be like. Bro, let the thing breathe. <laughs> let it have some personality. Yeah, I, I don't. I hate even some. Even recently with band, some bands I would like. Uh, you know, I'm like, why did they use electric drums? Like, I'm like, God damn it! Like, why aren't these live drums? It would sound better with live drums. Like everything. You know, I, I I'll use like Stabbing Westward as an example since I like them so much. Um, you know, their first, second, and third albums from the '90s. It's like one of the things that the lead singer said recently in an interview. I think he said it with me, and then he said it in another interview. He said, oh, man. I've been going to wrestling shows oh. for over 30 years. <laughs> in all that time. That's not what he said. Until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Can either one of you play Sunshine of Your Love on guitar? Yes. Uh, yeah, I bet Rostafa could do that, yeah. Actually, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'm actually not far away from home. I'll get my acoustic out and I'll play that. There you go. And uh, Rostov is actually good on guitar. 
Um, yeah. I appreciate that. Um, he's he is really good on guitar. Um, I saw him playing live in that video, and he's good. I would love to play drums with Rastafa. Like we would have a good time. Like it would you know be what? Really fun. You know what? I would like doing that, but the thing is, though, playing with you, though, I would actually have to go outside my comfort zone. So I would actually have to get a Marshall. Because I normally yeah. like going through fenders and stuff, but with a Marshall for you, yeah, I would do that. It'd be fun. It'd be really cool. Yeah. I'd have to, and it's not that great out of the realm because we're not that far away. Um, but it's uh, no. But going back to what I was saying, he was like, "Oh, you know, one of the things the fans were saying is, oh, it, you know, that sounds like stabbing. You know, it sounds like stabbing westward, or it doesn't sound like it." And I think one of the things missing is there's a, there's sort of like a programmed or electric drums, and the guitars aren't as ringing grunge '90s. Right, yeah, and it's so clean. it's just missing that dynamic of those '90s grunge ringing guitars and the live drums or the you know real drums. There's... Well, there's a reason for that too because a it's quicker and b it's sleeker because right. you know you want a certain tone. A company, whoever's advertising on TV, wants a certain tone, and if they feel it's too rough or they feel it's too this or that, yeah. you know, again, you're dealing with a company that's paying you to do a specific job that they don't understand musically, but they understand exactly what they want the moment they hear it. Yeah, and uh, well, I mean, on honestly, with Stabbing Westward, like in their recent album, you know, they're, they're on a label that's small, and they're not looking to do much really. And by the way, they shouldn't even have a label, in my opinion. I think they should just release stuff on their own and make all the money. But um, you know, it's like. I can hear the drums, and, and sometimes they sound pretty good, actually. But, like, there's other times where it's like, yeah, they're missing the live factor because on those first three albums, you know they're sitting in a room, you're in a recording studio, and there's a drum kit with the carpets everywhere and all that shit. But now you know, oh, well, they're producing these drums in patterns in, in the studio, like in on, on a machine. And, yeah. and even on some of the songs, there's electric drums used. So they actually used electric drums on some of the songs, and on some of the songs they actually used just programming. But it's like, and you ugh. you can tell the difference. You you can literally hear it, especially within like the next millisecond of that next beat coming in. Right. Um. Oh. Oh. Jay Savage. Yeah, she was not playing the guitar really on the solo in the halftime show. Um, but, but it was, yeah. but I mean, you can't, you just can't do it. It's not I hated it because the thing is, is like, if you're going to sing and half of your performance is going to be lip sync, I understand for the purpose of dancing. Cause you know, yeah. again, when you're breathing, you don't want to be over exhausted, but when it comes to just playing the guitar, don't freaking dub that, please. I know. Don't I don't, do I don't. That. It's just, I know how hard it is for them to do it in a stadium like that. And I know they can't, but yeah, I don't even. I don't like that. You just threw up a note. I don't care. That's in the moment. Matter of fact, here's a little trivia for you. Yeah. A little Richard at WrestleMania 10. Oh, yeah. that's Dude, you know what? I never noticed it. I never. When I was a kid, when I was a kid, I was obsessed with that theme. I loved the way it kicked in on that second when it kicked in on the verse. Oh, beautiful, poor spacious skies. And it was like they, they this beat kicked in. I thought it was so amazing as a kid. It Rastafa, it wasn't until I think two or three years ago that I put it on upstairs and I was watching it and I went, what the fuck? He's fucking lip syncing. No, no, wait, this is what happened. Was, so he did the rehearsal. He did the rehearsal and he did it note for note as it was. Yep. Then he got cold feet for whatever reason and gave Bruce Burkhard and everybody else a hard time yep. and says, dub me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the, here, the, the, you know. the other thing that I didn't get was... um. I, now, I heard this on Bruce Pritchard's podcast, too. In fact, I I went and listened to that after I saw it because I went, oh, my God. And I said, does you know, Bruce Pritchard talk about this? And uh, so I found that clip. And also, I, I almost thought, though, when I watched it, that he does pick up the microphone and actually does start singing it live in the second part. Is I can't tell, though. But I know that intro part, the first, the soft part before the beat kicks in, is like so off. Like it's like that looks bad. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I don't know. That's too bad that he got cold feet like that. But it sounded great. That version of uh, oh, "Oh Beautiful" or whatever is. Oh, yeah, America! Yeah, America the Beautiful. America is beautiful. Been great. Yeah. Oh, that was it's that's just, my favorite though. If I could get that recorded, uh, Gargots, you got a seven string. Yeah, I was gonna oh, turn oh. on my light right now to show you. Yeah, it's a seven string. 
Oh, okay. I'm gonna. Uh, I, I, was, you know I was playing it. I was playing it, but I don't think y'all would. Y'all were able to hear it. Oh, okay. I got you. No, I couldn't hear it. I've right, been. Nice. Right, I'm gonna. Play, I'm gonna play you sunshine just real quick because I gotta get. You gotta get Hold going. I got it. Here. Is it? Did you hear it? Ibanez? Uh, okay. Oh, we're stopped. I can hear it. Yeah. All right. Cool. Give me a second. <laughs> Stop it, turn it up. Waiting so long to be where I'm going in the sunshine of your love. We got to get Rostop up here to hit the subway with me. I think if I get some, <laughs> I get some buckets, like we can make some real money. You know what I mean? We give you an eye patch. We're going to make a ton of money. All right? <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, that is good shit. Gustavo, man, he's got the soul, bro. You're going to put the eye patch on the brother. Yep. Well, my, why are you home? Yep. Like... Homeboy got shot in Dorchester, and now we're here trying to pay for the surgery. That's fire, bro. That's fire. We're going to need Jake to be like our hype man if we can get him out of the house. Yeah. I could do really well with hyping people up. But, like, yeah, pr pretty much, like, I'm on the drums. I got that that vibe on the drums but not on guitar in fact gavin's taking guitar lessons now and he really likes it actually and, and he's got long uh, well, good, for good for him he's I got care what i was even trying to no do. no do it again it's um not, it's not connect it's not connecting to it i guess like to, oh. to discord i always I always have a problem with it through discord yeah jesse used to have that problem when he used to play bass in the background he used to try to hook it up and it wouldn't work out it's just weird i could hook anything yeah. up i could hook the drums whatever but, like, Gavin's got long fingers and thin fingers, and, like, they're perfect for guitar or piano, where I've got real fat fingers and short. So my fingers are perfect sausage for... Sausage fingers. Sausage fingers. Perfect for grabbing dick drumsticks and smashing them. Bro, have you seen those drumsticks that, like, are, like, neon taped or, like, they glow or they do, like, the, the flashing deal and then just, like... Mm. homeboy would do all the tricks of the trade on it and just like you think it's going one way but it's going the other it's really cool it, like in the dark like for like a lot of those like progressive metal bands yeah if i was dude, playing, dude, those... if i was playing live i would definitely grab some of those for sure yeah but i haven't yeah. played live in so long that i think i would play live if i was like like rich like if i hit the lottery again i'd be like all right i have nothing to do i'm just gonna hang out with the kids and like once every couple weeks i'd i'd play somewhere or probably not. bro i literally I literally picture you kind of being like Jim Carrey and Ace Ventura at like what was it, Cannibal Corpse or whatever like that, and just out of nowhere, oh, <laughs> freaking head banging. <laughs> well, then the weird thing about me is like, when it comes to drums, like like I used to go to I used to go to the Yard Rock, which was like a blues place. Yeah. Um, and I really liked it. Oh, I can hear that gargoyle. That sounds good. Um. I used to like I used to love doing that because I was in so much metal and industrial type of bands that going to the yard rock was a good change, you know, to get a lot of blues and improvisation and things like that. Yeah. Well, I mean, you get that. And another reason why I have a problem with a lot of guys that play R&B or that claim to be great R&B guys or claim to be great metal guys, they don't have a blues history. They don't have a blues foundation. Or even a jazz foundation, for that matter, when it comes to, you know, changes. Mm. So that, that's – and, dude, a lot of them just are trying to be so quick with just right. like, you know, oh, I got this rhythm down. I got this rhythm. I'm like, okay, break rhythm now. Yeah, I've got – well, you're right. That's the hardest though because it's hard. Yeah, they're, they're – you know, you have to learn that. And that – some drummers, like even dude, me – like, blues is my favorite, dude. Like I've learned that. That was my first, like, learning thing, like, learning curve. My like, first learning, learning thing. Yeah, like learning curve. Like I, I gotta learn fucking pentatonics now. 
No, I, w- yeah. I, I had to I had to work myself into it because I am one of those people that was like, check out my beat, look at the fills. I don't need to study nothing. I can just play along to this because that's what I can do. Until, until you play with somebody that can actually do all that, and you're going, oh, crap. Right. Go back until, to- uh, yeah, until you're playing with somebody who's good, yeah. really good, and you're like, oh, why am I off time all the time and not able to – yeah. So you're like – Because oh. you're more focused on somebody else and you're not focusing on the beat. Trust me, I've been there actually, so – yeah. I'll- I've- Yep. I, I've I played with drummers that actually focused on like just playing, and they weren't focused on the beat. And then when I gave them a metronome, they were like, "We can't do it." And I'm like, "Yeah, yo, oh, bro. Jay- One time I had a click track just go on me, and I was playing to a click track, and it went. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> like, like hey, what do I do now?" Oh, dude, uh, Jay Savage in the chat wants me to sing "Racist American." Oh yeah, I mean, I would, I would, but. Uh... I've I don't have the lyrics actually. I don't. I knew. I love the song. I just don't have the lyrics. Hate all the blacks and Mexicans. Well, I mean, I got the chords, but I don't have the verse. I don't have the verses. Hey, bullfrog is a moron. <laughs> Scissor me, Joe. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What the fuck was that, roster For no wonder why you make videos for YouTube kids. They like anything you throw at them. L O L. Oh, sea bass the beast. Good lord! See, bet just wants to bust balls for the sake of busting balls, but my dude, you know, you, you ain't bringing your freaking A game even when it even comes to these. So, like, dog, if that's all you got, please keep donating, please. If it's not right. if it's not white, then it's not right. That was one of the lines. <laughs> yeah, apparently. Um, now, what is it? How else does it go? <laughs> Remember uh, when Austin was in the longest oh, yard? He's like, this is how white boy plays guitar. <laughs> Yeah, right. Well, Austin oh, said the. White man plays the guitar. Yeah. Uh, That's uh, how a white man runs the ball. This is how <laughs> this is how a white man plays a guitar. You know what? You know what I never thought of. You know how we talked about Back to the Future earlier. Yeah. You know what I never thought of. Do you know how nowadays they try to erase white people and everything, and they sort of say like black people invented it instead in the movies. Like they'll be yeah. like they'll be like, oh yeah, remember when your hero from the eighties eighties movie did this and he was a white guy? Well, now some young black lady is actually the one that did it or whatever. Or like Doctor Who, they're black kids, that sort of thing. Um, I thought about this in a reverse of that in the eighties in um, Back to the Future. Michael J. Fox plays Chuck Berry, right? And and he and and then he he like that guy calls his cousin, goes, "Is your cousin Marvin Berry?" Listen right. to listen to this, and so like back then, pe- black you know black people must have been like, of course, a fucking white guy invented rock and roll. Now what the fuck? Like they just retconned everything. Although I, but I think about honestly, it, guy, Michael J. Fox is cool as hell. So like I'm not gonna even right. Well, but I also think it's argument. not true. I think it's I think I think really, it's a conundrum, right? It's a paradox. Like Michael J. Fox heard this music, that's why he played it. But he technically created it, so it actually doesn't work. But it's a it's a movie, so you just don't think about it. But it actually well, but the, it doesn't really too. work. People learn from each other too. Like for example, like black people would like learn, even though like country music was always in the south, and black people also play country music. Again, they, you know, black people took from one type of musicality. White people obviously took from all musicalities. But again, they would mix mash. And it would end up becoming a gumbo anyway because yeah. we're all living in the same area. That's which why influenced the rest of the world. I never like. I can understand like why there's a more of a defensive like this is our culture thing, because yeah. I get I get why that is. But in reality, to me, it's a melting pot, and everybody takes from everybody, and but not in a bad way. The only time it's bad, the only time that it's kind of bad to me when it was bad was that sucks. Is that it was popularized in these places with a group of people and then all of a sudden you know the first guy that gets popular with it is this guy elvis you know so that gets national recognition and becomes this huge hit you know whatever you know so that's where i get it like it's an offensive like oh man like we've been playing this type of style for years and then this and all of a sudden we're considered like the devil because we're dancing a certain way which by the way you know on, on almost everything on ed sullivan was taped from the waist up right because it would, you know, encourage specifically women. Now, you know, to, now we know, twerk. Get, now we would twerk on the Ed Sullivan show if it was on. Yo, dude. Like, I mean, like the Beatles. I mean, practically. I mean, it's, this is incredible and still hasn't been done to this day. Where literally women or young girls were sitting in the in the in the rows of the. I forget which uh, music hall it was. It might have been uh, the Manchester 
uh, one of the Manchester halls, and they all piss themselves. Right. Because, right. because of the excitement, and that's never well, been done. Since. Well, see, vanilla, I, vanilla Ice is different because someone said Vanilla Ice. Vanilla Ice is different because Vanilla Ice did get popular for a bit and was a hit for a little while, but, like, there was already R&B and, you know, black, you know, African-American singers, rappers, R&B artists, I've been going to stuff like shows that. For over 30 so years. that didn't never really bother anybody. Or there's new addition that came new kids on the block. That my Ugh. security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. They're going to make a biopic of Abraham Lincoln and just you watch a black actor will play him. <laughs> They're going to say that Abraham Lincoln was black. I wouldn't be surprised in 100 years if they say that a darkie freed the other darkies. Well, uh, Seabass the Beast. <laughs> Seabass the Beast. Um, I, I don't think so because I think instead of doing that, what they'd rather do is tear down Abraham Lincoln and legit erase him. So that second part when you said that they would say that he that actually black people freed this, themselves, it wasn't Lincoln. And to some extent, that's a little true. Um, it but, is. So it is. And I can explain, but I mean, you go first, Joe. No, I won't. I won't. No, I won't, because I think you actually might know more. But um, the point is <laughs> that they did have it like white people had a huge hand in freeing the slaves. Abraham Lincoln had a yeah. had a had a position in freeing the slaves. And black people had a huge, uh, you know what I mean, uh, thing to do with freeing themselves and and other slaves. Right. So and that was mainly due to reading, which again, it would uh, one of the biggest influences and, and again, I've never actually actually told the story, but one of the biggest influences in my life was LeVar Burton. Right. LeVar Burton is one of the most intelligent <laughs> And one of the most caring individuals, like, dude, they just gave him a Lifetime Achievement Award last year or something, or two years ago. Mm -hmm. And I forgot how much work this dude did, even after when it, uh, PBS cut off their uh, their budget for uh, Reading Rainbow, because he was doing that for 26 freaking years. Wow. Yeah, that's right? crazy. Like, that's that's insane. Dude, right behind Sesame Street and yeah. I think uh, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, like, dude, he – he warped an entire generation of kids in like the best way possible to go forward. Oh. And the best part about it was, dude, he started out playing Kuta Kinte, then goes to um, playing on Star Trek. So he literally lived the warp zone of what black people had gone through and then what we're going towards all in I, one I, shot. I really love LeVar. Um, and I, and I, we all grew up with him and stuff and we love Star Trek, but um, the only thing I didn't love about LeVar recently was I saw him <laughs> at the school and it drove me nuts. And I think he was trying to do the right thing and motivate the kids and talk about things a certain way, but it made me so mad because he, like, you, you just said it, how important LeVar was. But as a kid, I loved reading Rainbow so much. Like, I loved that show. as a, like, up until about, yeah, it was you know. Great. And, dude. There's what, a documentary that came out. I think you might enjoy it. Um, it talks about, like, the reason why he got into that stuff because his mom was a teacher. I and saw, she I, was one of the very I, I first. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. I saw that documentary. It's great, but. But my point is, he, he was at the school recently. He was at the school two years ago. It was a, a, I don't know, it was all black school or just in the city somewhere or something. But he said this awful stuff to these kids, man. I did not like it. He was like, he went on a rant for a while about how they like it's like er, life will be harder for all of you than anyone else, and you're up against all this racism and things. He called them. He called them all blacks. I You're mean, black. it was very weird, man. I was like, why are you telling these little kids this? Like, well, I mean, I get it from, from his perspective. I can understand it because coming home from school, living in L.A., especially dealing with, you know, LAPD. Yeah. It's no joke. I mean, and that's during the time of crack. Yeah. And he was one of the very first black people when he went to, um, I think it was UCLA. And he um, was constantly getting profiled every day. And he was just trying to be an actor. Right, and I agree with I know I know that, and I know that he dealt with hard times and things like that. But I just felt like, damn man, don't tell the kids this. Like, tell them. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there's certain you things know. you say, but there's also certain things you don't say. Like, there's a the the like, balance. He's gonna uh, now. Was was this was this were these kids like in an urban school? Yeah, the, I th or it was just like it was. Uh, I don't know. It was all black school, I think. But or an, or was that just the area? But it was just. Or how, maybe it was like in a very bad fucking. Like, I don't. It, hood, in the hood? it just I don't get it's it's not it's not wrong if he says you guys will be up against it life is hard like 
and where you know this area is even tougher. But, he, but like it wasn't just that he was really lathering it on about racism and the color of your skin and all these things. And I was like, bro, I don't see Martin Luther King saying this sort of thing to these kids. Like he would like or anybody else with like a brain. Like you would say like. You can be anything you want to be, and you might which have is what his original message is, right? Which is was. which is why, like, I don't like what he was saying. I was like, I would have said, like, listen, hey, you can be a drug dealer down the street, too. right? Right. You may, you may, you may have advantages other people don't have, and you may have a lot of disadvantages other people don't have. But the bottom line is, no matter no matter what, if you fight as hard as you can, you'll have a chance to be anything you want to be. I would say that. But the fact that he was just pouring on this like darkness, it was so weird, and I was like, "God damn, what is Hollywood and L.A. done to people that they're giving a speech like this to these kids?" It was a, it wasn't happy. It was like very dark, and I was like, "Why is he doing this?" Would you would you say that they were very very young? Like if if it was like teenagers, yeah. I get it, but was it like extra like K through five or whatever? Or or like if there had been a question and he had brought that up or whatever, like. Like, cause, cause, quite honestly, you could say, like, depending on where you are in the country, depending on who the people are around you, depending on your experiences, you're all we're all gonna have different experiences, and life isn't fair, and you may experience a much harder time than somebody else because of many different reasons. But like, but it wasn't like that, dude. These kids were like, I don't know, eight or seven. Yeah, that's a little weird. And it was like, why are you doing this? Like, don't say that to them. And I couldn't believe that LeVar was doing this because I like him so much. And it was hard to listen to it because I was like, what do you – don't say this to these kids. They didn't kids. even know who he was, though. They probably – you're right. They didn't. But it was like, <laughs> yeah. god damn, like, tell, like, the, I mean, tell these like kids – you're 30 or 40 years old, you know who LeVar Burton is. They I probably – yeah. Well, but, I mean, eight-year-olds didn't probably. Or, yeah, exactly. And, and remember, he's like three generations removed or two generations removed – from you know you know again when like he was in the height of PBS and you know that whole thing of just being a television guy because he was he was mainly a television guy he wasn't necessarily a Hollywood film actor it was more straight to TV type of stuff so I, that was the only medium that he really screwed around with I was so shocked um, by what he was saying but um, I did. But, like, I think he was being – I think he just was trying to be honest and he was saying something. I think if he looked back on it and if I – you know what I mean? Like, that it was a little bit out there and I think he was just riffing and th that he just got into this kind of dark point. And it got clipped and I saw that clip and so I thought of that. But I think he was just trying to – you know, I get what he was trying to say. You know, it's not wrong to, to so warn kids, I guess. But it should have been more – he didn't do enough of, like, you can be anything. Like, like instead of which is, focusing which is on – ironic. Right, right. You, ironic, you would think he would focus on the positive. Like, let me tell you guys, what do you see when you look out on the field? You know, you, the football field, there's so many people that look like you. Um, you know, what do you see? Like, the president, Barack Obama, in eight years, you know, with this guy, Jimmy. NBA P stands for. Jimmy Hendrix. Like, he gives so many things. Look at what I did in my life. You know, like, you can be anything you want, and there's nothing that's holding you back, really. Even if there are obstacles, you have to fight through those. Even if things aren't fair, you can fight through being not fair, and you can become the best. But if you give up or let those things weigh you down, you won't make it. Like so, you like this positive message, but he didn't really delay deliver that positive to those kids. And I felt that he's raising those, he's teaching these kids to be victims with what he was saying. And I was like, I don't. Well, I was funny. angry. I saw it. and I didn't it's like funny, it. Because in the lyric of reading Rainbow, it says, "I can go anywhere. I can be anything." Right. <laughs> Exactly. So, so like, uh, it, it sounds like he gave that. up on these kids when he walked in that building. He goes, "Man, this is a real oh, shit." Yep. Yeah, I was be, I'm serious. Be fucking drug addicts. And yes, shit. he was but, like, "You're gonna be pregnant in like eight years." Yep. You're gonna be. You're gonna. Fucking That's be what he was doing. I, I'm telling you. I, like, I wish I had the clip. I. And, it's unbelievable. Uh -huh. What he, I couldn't believe it. I was like, "What are you doing?" And he, I, I he was gave up on, dude. It's that. It was. It's so bad that I was. It was like high school high, but. I Except, was angry, you know, dude. I was watching it and I was getting angry. And I'm like, why? I'm Joe's actually gonna be getting the John angry. Lovitz of high school high saving these fucking high school kids. I, I wanted to uh, kick. You could be anything. If I could, I wish I could have turned on Stone Cold's music, kicked the doors in of that school, <laughs> and I would have been like, Lavar, La get the fuck out of here for a second, Lavar. <laughs> and dude, I would have grabbed the microphone and I would have cut a promo for these kids. Like, you like, can find it. I'll find you, it. I, you can like be anything, and I would have cut a promo on all the fucking Black history of how great everybody is, and also like, 
you know, and I would have closed out be with anything. Yeah, you could be a monkey's ass too. Don't teach these kids that it's white versus black, and you're gonna have it way worse than anyone else, and that it's gonna be tough, and you guys go to jail and all these other. Like, what are you doing? Like, don't do that. I mean, not with these kids. Tell them they can be anything. Focus on the be anything. Oh now, God! You, how many it was years so ago crazy. this was? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know. It was a couple years ago. It, it, I was like, I, I probably have the tweets somewhere because I tweet. I think I tweeted at him. I was like, yeah, way to kill, like way to just like. It was in a school, or was it like? It was a school. Fifteen. It was like a school. Oh, like, uh, a speech that he did, like with, with kids with fucking gown on and everything. I can't find it, but it was on Twitter where I saw it. I can't find it and, on YouTube though. That's that's rough, man. I can't believe he did that in front of kids because like. He did say, like, be bold, be fearless. But, yeah. Like, like, I'm sorry. When I was that age, I wasn't thinking racism. Racism didn't really hit my head until maybe I was, like, 12, 13 when I was getting into middle school. Like, oh, I guess it's a thing. Because right. when I was eight, it's like. It was a I thing when, uh, when uh, what's his name, started getting his ass beat in 92, 93. Oh, yeah. When, um, what's his name? Yeah. Um, Rodney King. Oh, fuck. Rodney King, no, yeah. That, that didn't really That's like. When it started coming on, honestly, dude, Rodney King, regardless, regardless of what Rodney it. was, regardless of what Rodney was doing or whatever, um, Rodney King was a huge eye opener. But I already had my eyes open because I watched Roots. So, like, I watched Roots. <laughs> bro, bro, I want like Would think about think saying? about it. How old was I? I was I was um, you know what else is funny about that? I watched Roots. I watched Reading Rainbow, and I didn't really figure out. And I watched Star Trek, and I didn't really figure out that Jordy was those three guys until like the second season what? of Star Trek. I realized I went, wait a minute, holy shit, this is the guy from Reading Rainbow, and he's the guy from Roots. Like it all came together at one point when I was like four or five, six, and I was like, holy shit, I didn't know that. But I mean, dude, I saw Roots when I was five. So, but but I'm also not some crazy woke psycho either. And I watch, you know what I mean. So I'm not like some indoctrinated woke person. Like, but I grew, but I saw Roots, fucking five years old. I went, holy shit, they did this to people. Like, I mean, at like five or six years old, I saw Roots on TV. And so, and my mom. I saw, I saw Roots only one time, and I was like 13 because it was required in the school system that we watch it. But what? It's one of those Weird? cases. Where what watch- school did you go to? <laughs> dude, dude, I was not prepared for it even at that age of 13 because it's one of those cases where it's like when you watch Schindler's List. You yeah. only watch once, and you don't want to watch it again. Not because it's not a great film; it's just you get really upset watching it. Yeah, you're like, I can't do this. I'm not gonna do this again. Um. Yeah, no, I agree. Yeah. Um, Roots is, uh, I've probably seen Roots like five times, but. Uh, really? Yeah, because only because of this. St- I know it sounds sick almost, but it's like the nostalgia of it. I watched it twice. <laughs> I, know, like, I know that sounds so <laughs> fucked up, but it, it is. Like, it oh, is I, love it. I love it when he hits him. The, I love I would, it when he hits him. I was the, watching, the like, yeah, hit him time. again. Hit him again. Oh, oh, yeah. Hit him again. No, yeah, I, uh, I, I I think I saw it two two or three times as a kid. Then I watched it again in like 1997 when I found the VHS recording of it. Then I think I watched it again in like 2006 or something out of curiosity. Like I forget what was that was like. Let me watch that again, and that's it. But but um, yeah, when I saw it, so I saw it at five years old. So I never, I mean, it, all it did was make me go like, dang, like so I just always knew like, oh, there was we did this, you know. And there were slaves, and I mean, this Disney a- had some crazy shit too. Roots, Disney had like bloody roots, roots. Sorry, we're going to Sepultura later, Mister Pico. Uh, oh, I fucking love Sepultura. Um, no, Max Cavalera's coming back with. Was it, uh, roots was kind of the end of Sepultura, uh, though. To be honest, Roots was where like they basically were turning into Soulfly at that point. I feel yeah, like. Yeah, I think Soulfly is coming back with oh, okay. uh, another. Fuck it. Tour. But shit, I saw that one that's a uh, Lamb of God and fucking Mastodon. Ooh. Man, L- Lamb of God's going to be playing the Ashes in the Wake. It's been 20 years. Oh, my like, God. Damn, dude. I, that's what I said. I remember like, we played it. I played with like the I, most famous one. I played with Lamb of God and. Uh, uh, Where they oh, burned the priest or two, Lamb of God? 2002. Oh, so here he comes. Look at this. Change. 
But this is the 80s version. If it comes to the country and it isn't white You gotta throw them back and start a fight Alright, I can't do it right now. My voice is fucked. But um, I am a racist American. Hey, the blacks and mags again. That shit is on YouTube. It's you can book. find that. It's on YouTube, yeah. I'll work on it later. I'll go put that one. on Patreon. That's one of my favorite songs. I think the part where it's like, if it's not white, it's not right. Like that. <laughs> what the hell, bro? Yeah. It's not white. It's not right. You. I thought you were saying yeah. other shit. In a, well, I said a lot. In of another things. freestyle version. Yeah, Kids is a fucked up movie too. Can't do Kids. And Requiem for a Dream is another one. Like, okay. <laughs> Like, oh, record for three, man! It made you feel like shit smoking weed. Yep. The other, the other the one that the, is... I got to be honest. There's another one. These are all movies that I cannot watch by myself anymore. If I watch them by myself, I might kill myself. So, um, the other one is um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Hello? Mind with uh, Jim Carrey. That movie, oh. that movie breaks my heart. Like when she erases him or whatever. Like that is super sad. That movie. I cannot deal with. Eternal Sunshine of Spotless Mind. It makes me That's like... It's a Michelle Gondry movie, right? Is it a, a, the a, guy... fe- a woman director? What? Or is it a guy? No, no, it's, it's a guy. I uh, thought it was a woman watcher. Yeah, it is. Yeah, no, it, yep. they did... They did... Uh, yeah, Gondry, right? He, he, uh, he did... Uh, uh, he did music videos before that. Really? No, he did... Uh, yeah, he did uh, Cake. Music videos. That one where he's running down the street on fire. Oh. Now he directed that one. I think he did some Bjork. And then I think he directed um, White Stripes. Like Bjork? The one, the, the Lego fucking... one. Okay. One, bitch. It's a baby. Yeah. yeah. It's weird that Kate Winslet and Jim Carrey like actually had some kind of chemistry. Although Jim Carrey was like, what, 10 years older than her? And he likes guys. Yeah. And Elijah Wood was a little creepo he's... fucking it. I couldn't even really get into that movie as much, but I mean, I really liked it. I could get into the, the the cinematography and everything. I think it was just like one of those movies you have to watch like thirty times and you go, "Oh, I get it now." No, I Which, just oh, the spot. I thought it was pretty, you know. I don't know. I thought it was pretty straightforward, but it was just sad to me. Like it was like, oof. Like I, you know, you gotta have your heart broken yeah. to know it still works. Sometimes. What is that? Stop the drama stuff that he's done, but again. <laughs> Oh my oh, God! Hear me? You're breaking up everywhere. Jesus Christ! Crap! He's trying to download the movie for free right wow. now while he's. <laughs> Can you hear me? Uh, a clo- oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I don't see Dreamer Slain. I don't agree with that. A Clockwork Orange is like a movie I watched repetitively. I, yeah, I, I maybe yeah, I'm a maybe I'm a fucked up person, great. but I dude Stanley Kubrick I movies was... I watch a million times. Hey, you're not Shit, that even the up, moon bro. landing. I watched the Stanley Hart documentary multiple times and I'm laughing. So I'm pretty fucked up. I was just, I was just saying that I like Jim Carrey and some of the dramatic roles that he's done. Not everyone, but I'm more of a Robin Williams fan just because he could do both seamlessly and without you know a whole lot of you know distraction or lack of effort. That well, the, you he know, died from that method acting. Like, hey, 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 hey. That's fucking Robin Williams and everything. And then when he gets all serious, he's like, what? yeah, no, he's all excited all the damn time. And then, and then we get serious, and then we get. Well, there you World's go, Jesse. Dad, whatever got... it was, that was uh, that movie's fucked he up. Did. In that movie, he did. That was a fucked up movie. But that was, he didn't hang himself in that movie. His son hung himself. Uh, yeah, and he just yeah. He, he, he his, played the child in Final Cut. Himself. It was Final Cut, and I think Photo, Photo Booth. I think for one hour he photo. Was, one hour photo, yeah. He was a bad Where guy. A creepy those son of a bitch. Ones. Yeah. Those are great ones. Yeah, one hour photo was I, was, I had never seen him in a role like that. Yeah. Like, they, then, yeah, uh, that was pretty fucking crazy. Remember, uh, remember we the, all like, uh, remember, remember the one where he, uh, the dad of the year one where the kid jerk died jerking off? Yeah, yeah. The world's best dad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're yeah. talking about. Oh, my God. What's greatest dad? The greatest dad. What the hell? <laughs> that sounds awesome. Yeah, you got to see that. Yeah, movie. Go watch. I, I'm, I'm, I'm actually his, sad. His son writes like 
his son writes like the uh, the greatest like book and like it's like his death book or whatever, and he publishes it as him, and then they find out it's a, it was his son, so he gets shunned. Gargath, just like, take just tell him the whole movie, Gargath. Well, it's, you know. Yeah, there you go. I'm actually it's mad. Just... I'm, I'm mad that I even mentioned the jerk off part because if you haven't seen that movie, yeah, because I just said that's the end of the movie. Yeah, the best, the best <laughs> thing that's in the, the end of the movie, the best. That's the be... No, that's the that's the best part of the movie is like you're watching this movie with Robin Williams and you're like, what's this going to be about? And the next thing you know, well, it's... it's his kid accidentally died waxing his carrot, and you're like, what the fuck am I watching, bro? What is no, that's, this? That's that's where the that's where the movie starts. I know. Carroting his carrot. That's like Still the best everything. death ever. Like how good was it that he jerked off to the point of death? I don't like That's Inception. Pretty, yeah. I hate that movie. I don't know why I don't like Inception. I hate it. I don't know why. I, I can barely oh, yeah. get into Christopher Nolan films. Yeah, it's, I like the Batman stuff. I like Interstellar. What... I love Interstellar, actually. I really do. I don't like okay, Interstellar. Was all right. Huh. I but love. The, I didn't like the Batman one because it looked like it looked like fucking Batman was running around in a cosplay. Wait, you didn't in the like any of, of the fucking... Batman ones he did. I didn't like the Gotham in Batman, and like the Christopher oh. Nolan Gotham. Oh, because it, it, because it was, it was more it was like modern Gotham. type of like like gangster modern. Yeah. Okay. And it it was like he was, was running like around Chicago. like a cosplay. Yeah, it was like Chicago or whatever, or Vancouver, wherever well, they fucker were shooting. What, wow. So you like the fucking uh, mushroom fucking New York? The other one was. Yeah, like that's Gotham. All that yeah. graffiti, uh, like the Batman that came out recently, that was pretty good. With see, Gotham. I didn't like the other ones as much because it seemed so fake. Yeah, like the Tim Burton one. I mean, I think what you're I saying like is them. like it didn't have it was too realistic because because Christopher Nolan went for a more okay. of a realistic like Batman situation, like like bad guy mobsters, and it's realistic in today's day. Whereas the original Michael Keaton ones had that Tim Burton kind of like over the top theatrical look to the sets that g- gave it its own vibe and the new movie also the, has that sort of like dark tone of the weird The Batman? Yeah, the Batman. I, I um, think the I think the Batman has like a little bit of both. It's it's right on yeah. it's teeter tottering in between. It's like uh it's using dark surroundings and they're just filming around that. But that took great. the that took you out of the movie for the whole thing cuz of cuz of the way that it looked more Yeah. Modern. Yeah, after a while it did uh I did like the obviously we liked the Joker one, but the the third well, one, the, the Bane one, couldn't get into it. I thought the first Aww. one was the best. I think what Batman Batman begins the first one was the dark. One. As, the first one was dark as hell, but yeah. I don't know. I just like that. Just, the first one's like a big, a nice part. album, and the second one's a big hit single, and then the third one's like a weird amalgamation mix or something. Yeah. Like I didn't dig up yeah. uh, with asthma. That was weird. <laughs> Dude, I want to first play thing with in, your uh... penis, Batman. Let me play with your penis. Do you have the <gasps> I love your penis. Or all the drugs. Or all the drugs. You don't like when I play with your penis, Batman. Dude, the fact that you had somebody legitimately at Walmart looking for green shots in the middle of the night as Bane was the funniest thing ever. Oh my god, I forgot all about that. You have the chalk. Do you have the The chalk, yeah. Oh, the green chalk. You have the green chalk. That that probably is still on YouTube. That's on YouTube still somewhere. You haven't done a prank call in a while. That was... What year was that, Jesse? Uh, that we did that, 2013. Oh my god, uh, dude, that was the very first. Um, 2018. Um, what the, what's the show we do? Dark or something. This? Oh, after no, da- after no. after dark. Yes, it was the first after dark. I think. Wow, holy shit! Yeah, did you say darker size this. <laughs> it was after dark. Whatever, dude. The darker size this. That's when AJ Adams and all these other motherfuckers come in, but. I haven't. We haven't done that in so long. Oh my god, bro! Look at no, this. it was. Great. And you, I mean, you did back in the day. You oh, that wasn't 2013. Friends. Then that was 2015. Uh, maybe 14. Yeah. How about the the thumbnail for the one? Remember when you weren't there for a couple episodes? So I did it with uh, Dave. Look at the look oh, on god. my face here. I can see that. I thought you did it with Jake. I didn't know. It was after Dave. dark with after dark with dickheads. <laughs> they called it. <laughs> oh, yeah, bro. Um, no. I'm surprised there's not more of those. That episodes. was a fun night though, because we didn't. We were just bullshitting. 
I think the name came out of some stupid shit you said. Like, this is hilarious. Well, there's that a typo fun. negative uh, DVD called After Dark. I wonder if it was that. I don't know. I just, you went, you went After Dark. There's, there's light. porn called After Dark. Mm, there sure is. Well, I mean, yeah. I think it was that. I would think it was that play that play that Playboy one uh, with those two chicks, and they would have uh, after dark, and they would be like with their titties out, and lingerie on the couch. Mm. After dark, there's divorce. Oh, you mean on the Playboy channel, would they'd be jerking each other off, and people would call in jerking off? Oh, oh. yeah, that's now that's what I'm looking for. Yeah, you remember that shit? Well, this is uh, yeah, yeah, this is eight years ago, Jesse. Yeah. Jeez. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what happens. That was good. Good. Fucking good night. She's he's, really a mean Asian lady. He's probably in a fight with Randy. Was in a fight with his girlfriend. She's like, "I'm sick of you never being here." I don't know what we're talking about there, but interesting. No, dude, you're fucking. It's crazy how your mic and everything sounds so different, but it's still pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I was probably on the, maybe on the sure, at that time. I feel like there's missing ones too because I don't see. I feel like we. Oh, there might. Be. I feel like we did some we did before the... this. No, no, dude. The, well, wait a minute. Maybe. I know the first one was the Bane call. I know that there's cause... some before this because you know why? Because June is me and Dave episode two. July is me and Dave episode three. And then October is the first one with me and you after those. So where's episode one? Well, that's fucking, that doesn't make sense. Right? So they're Unless mi- you missed. Like... I think they might be on Corrupted then. No, 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 because it was you and me doing shitty. Well, you did a good bane. I, we what, both were, no, I remember it. May, maybe, that was how the whole fucking. Show I searched. Started. I searched after dark the title, like to see. Oh shit! If that would come up, and, and then I, well, you're right. And in fact, that we did do them on corrupted, but we did them in 2020. In fact, I oh, have yeah. here. Here they are. These like the, six, these are all on on on, cor- on corrupted. Uh, February, July, oh. November of 2020, and there's a 2018 one with me and you too. Oh, you mean uh, the channel corrupted? Yeah, like, yeah. Not the, show, the, the fucking channel, because you were going probably through a that strike was, or something. That was when we brought it back and we were doing it again. But the original one that we did was like I feel like it was 2014. Yeah, no, it was. It was that because yeah, that, yeah, that makes yep. a lot of sense actually. Maybe if I search Jesse, like it will come up, but oh, it's gonna be somewhere. You might have even. You might have even clip the Bane shit. I wonder I don't if know. I deleted but, it. Yeah. Oh my god! How do you fucking delete the that. first one? Jesse Ross. says a bad word on Raw. That's great. <laughs> Which one? Which word was that? Jesse <laughs> says a lot of bad words. I guess that's true. <laughs> oh my god! The China shit was fucked up, dude. I, that was I got tricked. We were the first ones to break that story. Why didn't? Who thought she was really dead? I didn't. <laughs> oh yeah, you didn't. Yeah, you pissed everyone off because they. I don't were... think nobody did, but then we found out, and I was like thirty minutes into a fucked up rant, and I'm like, "Well, I can't stop now." Yeah, <laughs> you just kept going, going for it. Monetize yeah. this episode nine partially blocked. Oh fuck me! Dude. Oh shit! How bad <laughs> That's about I started. Seven or eight or nine, yeah. That was like the best part. Oh man. Oh my God. Well, I, I gotta probably wrap it up here. Those are fun times, man. I, those are the best. <laughs> yeah, those are good times. <laughs> good night, Rustafa. All right. Hey, before oh. you go, you gotta give us the Cronin kisses. Whoa. Oh. What's that? Oh. You yeah, gotta like Kirby kisses? <sighs> 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 there we go. Yeah. Oh. I love that. Yeah. There it is. Um. John Montgomery is dropping a super chat here as we uh, close it out. It says, do Ooh. you still th- have the Tommy player clips? Yeah, I do. Play your, play your fucking clips. clips. Play, your fucking... play your fucking clips. Well, I got that one. I think I played it the other night, too. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I can yeah. get it to pull up. My fucking folders are all slow. Let's see if it's I can get the it. Fucking... It's, the, it's every yeah, every fucking it year. Your Everybody's computer gets slower and slower, I swear. Yeah, this my computer is every three years. You need a lot of times, you especially when you're doing this stuff. The this the computers start to go. It's like three or four years they start to go because I've had 
what am I on my fourth or fifth now since doing this Super show? So that makes sense. Party. There it, it is. On the cloud. Do you still have the Tommy play your clip drop? <laughs> play your fucking clips. Play your fucking clips. Um, let me see, Tommy. Play, your, play with your fucking clip. Play your fucking, fucking clip. Play your fucking clip. Play your fucking clip. There's a live so many clips of Tommy here. It's <laughs> almost <laughs> unbelievable. Taking up with him. Yeah, it's like Tommy clips are just taking over my whole fucking computer. Um, and I also oh. let's see, if we'll find it. It's in here somewhere. Why don't you b- came in a bowl in your mother's cum soup or whatever the fuck he said? Um, your mother. You had the fucking cum. picture. You you had the oh, gif I... of of that show, oh, oh, um, Psych shit, for that. Tommy. I remember that. Right. All <laughs> right, Tommy. Jesus, don't get all giggly on me, Christ. Um. I know you like Psych. Where Did you it? like Psych? And they're going out for some hangings. Oh. Oh. Well. Oh, cleaning up my system there. Oh. Jesus, the fucking echo. That was like a drum snare with fucking hey, production Tommy. on it. Hey, oh, I can smell that from here. Gotta go. Oh, okay. <laughs> he came on the show and left. Remember that? Hey, Tommy. Hey, Joe. What's up? Oh, gotta go. Oh, okay. I don't know if he got a call or he had to shit himself. I don't know what happened, but I remember he called and was like, Oh, I gotta go. Oh, okay, you just called. Hey Tommy. Hey Joe, what's up? Oh, gotta go. Oh, okay. Oh, it, oh I <laughs> dude, that's what it was. He farted and shed his pants and goes, Oh, gotta yeah. go. Yeah, dude. You're oh, exactly you should put those clips that's together. Crazy. Hey, Joe. Oh, yeah. gotta go. That's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. Play your fu- I'm Wait. playing the clip. Oh. Play your fu- <laughs> I'm playing the clip. You don't play your fucking clips. Jesus, right. Play your fucking Jesus. clips. <laughs> play your fucking clips. Play your fucking clips. Play your fu- I'm playing oh. the clip. Yeah, <laughs> dude, you got <laughs> fucking cheated on that one. <laughs> I, I I outdid him right there. He was like, fuck you! And then I outdid it. I've been going to wrestling shows for years. Never in all that time have I ever felt until last Sunday that my security, my safety, my life was in danger at a wrestling show. Joe, why are the Super Bowl commercials so bad now? And I watched the video of Tommy throwing up. It was disgusting and hilarious. Joe, I have to lay off the donations. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think Seriously. that I think that the Super Bowl commercials are so terrible. I've said this for the last five years. They're so terrible yep. because now it's not about being really funny and clever. Now it's about just getting a celebrity in it to be like, oh, that's that person. Like that's that's funny that they're. It's in like it. once the hype started for the commercials because they were so good. Yep. They stopped making them good. Yep. Exactly. Now it's about who who what celebrities can you get in your commercials. It's not about being yeah, really. Who, that who can creative. you bring back from the dead and shit with fucking CGI? Yeah. This, I understand. this year might have been the first year I saw nobody say a goddamn word. It's like everyone's so used to it now. They're like, yeah, we won't even mention that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, well, Arnold Schwarzenegger and fucking uh, Danny DeVito. Those oh. things are hilarious. That was all right. Yeah, but, nobody, yeah, but again, bought, again, it was just yeah, it's just cool. celebrities. And and the big thing in the last three years has been to. Go to an old 80s, 70s, 90s show thing and revitalize it in a Super Bowl commercial. So those have been, that's what's going on now. Now it's about like, remember the show Elf? Well, Elf is coming back to do a Super Bowl commercial. You know, remember, you know, whatever. SpongeBob? SpongeBob is doing the fucking thing on Nickelodeon. Yeah. Well, Which, rem- by the way, remember, if you see those clips, those are ridiculous. Remember when Arnold Schwartz uh, thingy had a baby with Danny DeVito? Schwartz thingy? Yeah, I don't say the last name anymore. It's, it's a racist. Um, so it's an, no, that'll be N I. It's N E. Yeah, but it don't sound good. Just... No, but I, I I do I will clip you though. Well, neither does he. Jokes is about masturbation. Big Matt. <laughs> oh my. We are fucking clips. Well, you guys can settle things. You guys could you know settle this out, and you guys could set the peace, and so that <laughs> set the peace. Fuck you, you cocksucker! Yeah. That's the best cocksucker I've ever heard. Cocksucker! It was pretty good. Yeah, cocksucker! Cocksucker! 
So oh, I I, uh, I already heard the the Kitty song. It's been playing on Sirius XM for the past like two hours. Like, wow! I think like every Sirius like, XM still exists. Every thirty minutes. Yeah, dude. They oh have, yeah, they dude, have they they Liquid still, Metal. They still have uh, Jose still on there even doing the metal. Brian fucking yeah, Jose him Mangan. a cock. Yeah. It barely. So that's what they've been doing. They, it, so, yeah. Big Matt. <laughs> So they they came fucking out they came out with it uh, at like fucking donation. two hours ago. What the fuck, dude? Wow. No oh what my god. Fuck, the hell did he say? I don't even remember what on the... me. Holy hell! What fucking meme out of it? A fucking meme? What you do? You put that like that? Bro, what? I remember one time. Shit over his barber and said he hurt himself. Shit on that step. You fucking shit on a fucking man's step. It yep. hurt myself for several days, and you guys make a That's... fucking joke of it. Jesus. He's fucking dead. He's dead. <laughs> he's dead. 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 He's this is a deep cut a right deep here. Cut. Um, a deep cut right here. Uh, do you remember when Tommy would always eat on Monetize This, this dinner? Mm. And you guys would be like, oh, gross. Close your mouth. All yes. this shit. Oh, my God, bro. And I remember one time Leah was on there and she goes, gross. I'm never making chicken again. And I fucking lost it. Oh, that my was God. It. Well. Everybody now. Everybody now. Everybody now. Everybody now. Pete Mario's new rap album. Tommy's on the news. Tommy's on the news. Gather around the TV because Tommy's on the news. <laughs> Tommy's on the news. What? <laughs> Never. In all that time that I ever Let's felt it on until last Sunday. Let's gather around the TV because Tommy's on the news. My life was in danger <laughs> at a wrestling show. Tommy's yeah. Dork Knight and Luke lumped into one person, L.O. Yeah, he's a mixed uh, version of it. Seabass, the beast. Oh. He's a mix. Seabass. Um, that was... That's uh, a base. That was, um, you know, with Tony Khan... Uh, what what was I going to say? Fuck. Uh, what was I going to say? I don't remember. Yeah, another major announcement. Tommy's on the news. Sea bass. <laughs> Probably because he put a quarter in his caboose. Wake up, everybody. Let's all put on the shoes. Let's gather around the TV because Tommy's on the news. Tommy's what on the, the news. Fuck? <laughs> Tommy's on the news. How old oh, wait, is he's that? just on Ken's show again. <laughs> oh, fuck. oh, my God. That's an oldie by Tennis Racket Jones. Tennis Racket would... Uh, oh. Okay. Tennis Ragged Jones. Oh, Tennis Ragged Jones. Tennis Ragged Jones I cut that some. In a long time. He cut Holy some shit. fucking masterpieces, bro. We were talking about like putting tennis yeah, rackets and assholes shit. and shit. I forgot about that dude. Holy shit, he had a few of them. Yeah. He Holy had a shit. lot. There's a lot where, like, there's a folder somewhere of like 20 songs or something, and I, there's like five or six that we don't play often at all that's barely been heard. And I've been looking for that folder for a bit. And that song is actually in that folder, so that means that it's on this thing somewhere. But, uh, yeah. And then you smash your computer and that's it. Oh, my God. It's good stuff. Um, I guess, well, fuck. Well, I got to go to bed, Um, I guess. It's oh, bedtime. Yeah. You're going to bed already? God damn. Yeah. I'm going to go to bed. Well, you All know right. what I'm going to do, and I'm already doing it, so do it. You know what? I'm just glad Jesse has a microphone tonight. Wanda's the same one as always. There's just not seven people, 25 people. Oh, I got you. Wait, Jesse has a microphone? No. Same shit I've been using uh, for three Je years. Jesse has a micro. I'll be dreaming of the rock, to be honest. Can you, if and if I have a 
good enough dream of the rock i mean you can only imagine what my privates are gonna be Wait, like. <laughs> you get wet tonight or dry yeah, let me get wet tonight I the don't rock's want like well, He's like if, if you, you do, do anything better i'll make pancakes huh? <laughs> if you do anything tomorrow we'll be around all righty aw if aw like is gonna be good anything? like <laughs> well if aw is good honestly last oh, night or like last week was pretty good, good but uh see if it's gonna be good this week we'll see how you good got it sting is. coming yeah, you got Sting coming in as a tag team titles with uh with Darby Allen, so I'm looking forward to that. Okay, I might I might review it. I might watch it. I don't know. It's, it's, I don't know. See what happens. What's the geriatrics going on? Uh, you know Chris <laughs> Jericho being Hulk Hogan, right? You know pediatrics in the living room. Going... Pedi- <laughs> <laughs> Pediatric? What the fuck? That's the wrong one. I've got what? a, I've got what? pediatric problems. Baby children, man. Oh child. my god! You remember this? Do you remember this? Yes. <laughs> this is like the kid at the birthday party You set his dad's head on fire Very weird um, Alright I'm out of here uh, It's like the Vince Yeah, It's always like weird ass songs that you have Like the Vince will screw you one Yep You had a uh, you had so many. Oh, I just want to hear that Renaissance one. Maybe one day I'll find it. I think you might have deleted it. But damn it, the Renaissance one was great. I'd like to delete it. Yeah, dude, it's it. Yeah, I hope not. God damn it. Fucking the best one ever. But yeah, uh-huh. it's been a long night for you. I know that you got to go to bed. I'm just tired. I'm going to pass uh, out. Sam. Sure. All right. Have fun. I want to the moment. Keep it hard. Jesse, yep. yeah. Look at you, Jesse. You sexy beast. Peace out. Maybe there's another one I can play here. I'm sorry. I can't hold the conversation at this point. I'm not, that's how tired I am. I can't hold a conversation. It's Valentine's Day. Yeah, it's Valentine's Day. Let's get a little sexy. Oh, yeah. Monica's tits. Lay awake all the time thinking about Monica's tits. Eat off every night thinking about Monica's tits. Look at this pic on Twitter right now. Beat off to Monica's tits. Wanna eat some cereal with milk for some Monica's tits. It's what I'm dreaming about. I want to suck. Can't be just took a dump. I found they it. They kind of look like suds. And when JB takes that dump, it lifts his spirits up. Let the feeling lift you up, up, up. When you release up. that poop, let the feeling lift you up, up, up. When you release up. that poop, just another day in the box. Just clear myself out there. Oh, sorry. It's just another day in the box at the gym. Yeah. What the fuck did I eat? What the fuck did I eat last night? <laughs> Why does it bleed? Probably the side of me. Let the feeling lift you up. A good butt bump and really clear your bowels out. Let the feeling A good butt bump and really clear your bowels out. Sometimes you just have to shove something up there for other stuff to come out, you know?
<laughs> oh my god, bro. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude, the way that ends with like, oh, oh, like, bro, I. <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe it. I found them, guys. I found all of them, dude. Front, light. Front, light. Get off the show, you faggot. Drew has a diddle cave. 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 Drew has we a got diddle him. cave. From the side camera, Drew looks like Earthworm Jim. Drew has a diddle cave. 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 Get off the show, you fag. Like suds. And when JB takes that dump. Bro, this is called Friday Night Werewolf. What is this one? Friday night, Friday, 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 Friday,
Remember, you have no neck and you suck. Then you can start to make monetize this better. Hey, Drew, where is your chin? Already made that song, but seriously, where is it? Your body is one amorphous blob. Put your wife on camera so I can finish. And any time you think you're fat, you are, you're fat. Don't know how your neck stays up on your shoulders. Oh, you know that Drew's a tool, you stupid fool. I'd be terrified to see your porno folder. Boys and girls, I had a lot of fun, and I am so glad that I found the entire folder of Tennis Racket Jones songs uh, for Monetize This from 2017 to 2020. Um, that is a gem. Very happy about this. Um, let's give you Ryan, Ryan on Cronin's dick um, to close it out. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good night. your own fucking gimmick intellectual property you try to pass joe like he's going monopoly you want me making 200 bucks you're getting fucked by the long cock and tennis racket jones come fuck with me you take and you take and you never give it back sitting hitting all the same six women in the chat i'll let you and ride and i'm cronin's dick even though your own Yo, show is shit chris peeps is about as real as a spray tan Face looking like it's grazed by a rape van. You done fucked up, cut butt, you suck butt, your cunt's bloody, you dumb fuck, and your mom's a slut. Uh, and while I'm at it, fuck you, leech, motherfuckers. Hope these words leave you shitting in your sheets, motherfuckers. You all corny little bitches, this is beef, motherfuckers. Watch me beat, me, skeet, 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 all your mothers. I'm starting to think Joe Cronin should start charging admission for all the people that are riding on his dick these days. 
fuck. Get your own ideas. I lay you around and down. 